recognize and remove your hats as the Fort Lee Color Guard from the Fort Lee Non-Commissioned Officers Academy presents our nation's colors. Remain standing as Pastor Joe Ellison, Jr., Senior Pastor of City Park Church in Henrico, Virginia, offers tonight's invocation. Nest our families, let's pray. Father, in the name of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you tonight for allowing us to come and enjoy this sport that we love so much, NASCAR. We thank you, Lord, for each driver, their family, the staff. We thank you for God's divine protection over them tonight. Lord, we thank you, God, for what you're doing in the life of this organization. We thank you, Almighty God, for all the men and women who serve in our military around the world. We thank you, Lord, that you make them stronger and stronger to defend the principles that we believe in. Tonight, God, we give you the honor. We thank you for perfect weather tonight. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Here to perform our national anthem, please welcome the Trinidad Herald Trumpets of Fort Eustis, Virginia. gut feeling guys they're going to spend most of their night standing there yeah they will i mean i'm just sitting here right now just all jacked up and who's going to win this thing are we going to see a new winner tonight or is, is biffle going to make it is it going to be larson is it going to be biffle who knows i mean there's so many people so many nerves out there yeah what a great atmosphere too we got a packed house the light bulbs are flashing i can't wait for this thing to get started yeah, weather's great. You didn't even say that. <laughs> Let's go upstairs to the guys in the booth because they have the best seat in the house. It's DJ Allen and Andy. All right, Nicole, thanks. And so much at stake, big picture championship-wise tonight, within the confines of a short track race. Tight traffic, lots of beating and banging, and to win this race and get in, as so many drivers have to, it's really going to require perfection. Yeah, it really is. And uh, We've seen a lot of teams, 13 to be exact, be perfect or nearly perfect in getting themselves into the chase already. And these other drivers are going to have to be that tonight. It's going to take a lot on their part to make all of that happen. Yeah, and it can go bad quickly. As you can see here in the spring, lap one, turn one, two race winning contenders get knocked out of the race or out of a chance to win the race. And you can even dominate all night long and get to the very end and have one bad thing go wrong like Kevin Harvey did last week at Atlanta and you got no chance. Yeah, did almost everything you could possibly do to be perfect night and go to victory lane. But all it takes is that one small mistake and drivers that are trying to work their way into this chase can't afford to do that tonight. So from the first lap to the last lap of tonight's race, you have to be perfect. And as we've just seen, that's not easy to do. Now, late in the race, there's going to be a caution flag. There's going to be a restart. And as we've seen so many times this season, and even this season here at Richmond, the late restart is where the whole picture can change. Well, it definitely will. I mean, these restarts have turned out to be everything. It's all or nothing, and we're going to see it tonight. I mean, if you can't get it on this restart, sometimes if it, let it, if it sorts out, you're not going to have a chance. 
Yeah, and you, you, might, we know with the, you know you got to get it done early on, but at our short track, you might have a couple of laughs. Joey Logano did. He took his time, worked it to, to, to perfection here back in May, and was able to go to victory lane. So don't get yourself too excited on that last restart. There's that word perfect again. Casey Kane last week in Atlanta, another example. Well, here's a guy that saw an opportunity and said, I'm taking it. I'm going to make a hole on this restart. This is my chance to get in the chase. And he did it. He went out there, made the, made the pass, got his ticket punched, and now he doesn't have to worry about tonight. He can go out there and race for bonus points. So can someone tonight here at Richmond do what Casey Kane did last Sunday night, win and get in to NASCAR's postseason? It's going to be a tough night, a hard challenge, but it can happen. Will it be Greg Biffle or Clint Boyer? The engines fire, and we begin finding out next. NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at Richmond, presented by AutoZone. Get proven tough Duralast brakes, the official brakes of NASCAR, sold only at AutoZone. Get in the zone, AutoZone. Nationwide, Nationwide is on your side. And KFC, the world's best chicken. How do you KFC? Richmond International Raceway on a steamy 86 degrees Saturday night where the Federated Auto Parts 400, the race to decide who makes the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup is about to begin. Race fans, it's time for the most famous words in motorsports. Here to give the command, please welcome our Grand Marshal, lead technician for Claire's service station, Chris Claire. Driver, start your engine. Ready to roll tonight here at Richmond International Raceway. The cars will be heading from the pit lane onto the racetrack for their parade and pace laps momentarily, and then the green flag for the 400 lap go. Our ESPN in race reporter tonight is a 19 time winner in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series trying to grab the last place in the chase. The bubble man, Greg Biffle, will talk to him coming up.
beautiful September night here in the capital of the Commonwealth, Richmond, Virginia, where the NASCAR Spring Cup Series 400 lap is about to get underway. There are some showers forecast for later in the night. We'll be keeping our eye on the radar and let you know if they're going to become a problem. For now, though, track's dry and we're all ready to go. So you look at the chase grid for the moment as we get into this 26th race of the season. All the drivers with wins in that win column are in. The 14th place driver on that list, Matt Kenseth, has clinched a position in the chase also on point standings. Greg Biffle currently with the 16th and last seed trying to hold on to it tonight. If he wins, he's in. And if uh, there's not a new winner tonight, he's got to fight for it on points. Biff, our in-race reporter, and he's lined up back in 17th spot, DJ. Let's see how he plans on doing that. Hey, Greg Biffle, Dale Jarrett, ESPN. You have a copy? I got you. Hey, Greg, let's go right to our mailbag question. It comes from Matt in Seattle, Washington. He asks, you've been on a hot streak of the late with five straight top tens finishes. What have you done recently to turn your fortunes around? That's just all the hard work of the guys at the shop and this team have put in. It's, uh, we've been tested a lot and really uh, focused on what, what, make, what we need to do to make our cars better. And, We've been doing that, and uh, we've gained a lot on it. We still got a little ways to go, but we sure, uh, sure has made a difference the last five weeks. Hey, Greg, I know that most drivers that are in the situation you're in there, trying to get yourself a spot in the chase, want to know things a little bit different. But as far as information tonight, how much do you want? How little do you want? And just be the driver of the car and let things fall where they may. You know, uh, DJ, we just want to just drive the car and you know run our race and. You know, we know we can run in the top 10 here. If uh, one of those guys wins, it's, it's out of our hands. There's nothing we can do about it. But I think we could uh, stay in the top 10 all night. That's what we need to do. That's what we're going to work on. Hey, Greg, I've heard you talk about a couple of times that uh, this is the best car that you can remember having here in a while. How excited are you about tonight's chances? I'm really excited. I, you know, we, we were pretty good at practice. We were a lot better on the lap tracker than what I anticipated. And, I think uh, we looked at some things to make our cars a little bit better uh, for the race tonight. And uh, I feel pretty optimistic. All right, Greg, thanks for talking with us. Uh, good luck there tonight in uh, getting your spot uh, in the chase. And he's going to talk to your crew chief, Matt Pusha. Hey, Matt Pusha, Andy Petrie in the booth. You have us? I got you, Andy. Matt, I know there's a lot of pressure on you guys tonight We're trying to get that last spot, but you have made some really gutsy calls to put your team in a position to have a chance to make this year's chase. What kind of calls is it going to take tonight to ensure it? Yeah, we've taken some chances and uh, it's worked out sometimes, but uh, hopefully we don't have to take those chances tonight. We can just run our race and uh, do our normal deal. We'll play uh, offense when we need to play offense and play defense when we need to play defense. It just all depends on uh, how the cards fall and who's leading and and who's running away. We know we're racing, so hopefully we can just run our race and it works out for us. Well, Matt, good luck tonight. I know it's going to be a long, hard night, but good luck. Thanks for talking to us. Sandy. Matt Pusha and his driver, Greg Biffle, will be talking with throughout the course of tonight's race. High-definition onboard cameras here in Richmond, riding with Brad Kozlowski from pole positions. Got our good here on board. One of the race favorites, Kevin Harvick, is carrying the Jimmy Johns on board. Clint Boyer has the five-hour energy camera. Greg Biffle with our Ford EcoBoost on board. Joey Logano, the Shell Pennzoil camera. Kyle Larson, the Sunoco on board. Eric Almarola has got the Gwaltney camera. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. has the Nationwide Insurance on board. And as the cars work the uh, pace laps now, how do you? Brought to you by KFC. In this case, how do you make the chase tonight? Well, we talked about having to be perfect, and you'll have to be perfect everywhere, but especially on pit road tonight, these pit crews are going to have to be on it because the winning pass could be made down there. Yeah, short track racing at its best, which means some bumping, banging. Don't lose your temper. It cost yourself a chance of making the chase here tonight. And watch that last restart because it can change your whole night around in the blink of an eye. Some stories from pit road before the green flag. Here's Jamie Little. Well, Alan, since this race one year ago, Clint Boyer and the 15 team haven't had a lot to celebrate. Coming into this race, they're 23 points out of the chase, but that can all change with a win. Clint told me in pre-race he really likes his chances at going to victory lane tonight, and they're approaching tonight as a win or go home kind of night. Dave Burns? Could Tony Stewart find his way into the chase tonight? His record here, stellar with three wins. His car in final practice, one of the best. And if Tony earns his way in tonight with a win, NASCAR has said he'll be able to compete for his fourth series championship. Vince Welch. 
One of tonight's favorites is Kevin Harvick in this four team. Harvick's already won twice this season. He told crew chief Rodney Childers, there's two places I expect to win, Atlanta and Richmond. Last week in Atlanta, he dominated the race, but ended up 19th. Of course, now tonight, we're at Richmond where he's won three times already. He could get number four tonight. Not NASCAR's chase format dictates that for Jamie Murray to get in, he has to win, which means he may be forced to do some things tonight he really doesn't want to do. Now, Crew Chief Keith Rodden said, we will race others who are trying to get into the chase cleanly. But if you are already in the chase and you are in our way, we will move you with a fender, a bumper, or whatever it takes because we have to win to get in. Alan? It's going to get really interesting <laughs> in the closing laps. Half a lap from the start, quick reminder, our broadcast available in Spanish by activating the SAP button on your television, and that presented, of course, by ESPN Deportes. So a three-quarter mile round racetrack. 400 laps means it's a 300-mile race tonight. Tire fall off, speed slowing as the cars put more laps on the tire, very much a factor. It will cause strategy to be a big thing in the outcome of the race. Pace cars off. Here we go. One final race to make the chase. Kislowski leads lap one. Jeff Gordon falls in line second. Kevin Harvick third, side by side fourth. Now Jimmy Johnson sliding ahead of Joey Logano. Well, at least we made a complete lap this time back in spring. Did he make the turn one? <laughs> I saw Jimmy Johnson give his teammate Jeff Gordon a little break there. Probably cost him that third spot early on. That's not going to matter. He's hoping that if he needs a break that the favor will be returned. But uh, just trying to make sure that this race did get off to a good start for everybody up front. 4199, Kurt Busch, Carl Edwards. Racing for position. That would be for eighth and ninth. And now Edwards racing Kyle Larson in the 42 for ninth and tenth. I've heard Larson talk about that he really hasn't found exactly what he thinks he needs and it takes to, to win here. But he said that yesterday, by the time practice was over, it was the best that he's felt at this place. And he's going to need everything that he's got here to try to win tonight. We got a brief rain shower today, so NASCAR decided to have a competition caution at lap 50. So we're going to see that come out. Uh, and so the teams will have a chance to make an adjustment then. We're, watch how the truck uh, track rubbers in. We saw last night that it took rubber pretty good. Right now, everybody's making speed on the bottom. And generally last night, it was a few laps uh, after they put some laps on the tires before anybody moved up. I do see Kevin Harvick kind of sliding up already, trying to get some rubber laid down. Yeah, I, I saw him sneak up a little bit in three and four that lap. And now in one and two. 17, Ricky Stenhouse. 15, Clint Boyer. A couple of drivers winless this year. Boyer with the opportunity to possibly race his way into the championship on point standings, but not if somebody like Stenhouse wins that has not scored a victory yet. And, and Stenhouse hasn't been one of those drivers, but that, that we've really talked about as far as the win and get in, but he's certainly very capable. Loves this short track racing. Good qualifying effort. Boyer with a look for sixth place. said if ever I could pick a track that I had to go to that I had to fight my way into the chase this is it here in Richmond Tony Stewart 14 Kyle Busch 18 little deeper in the field here that's 18th and 19th spots that just changed hands you know, Kyle Busch in that 18 he's in the chase he knows that he has a spot there but I think this is a very important night for this race team they need a solid effort they've had a lot of bad things recently happening this team needs just a little bit of momentum to carry into Chicago next week yeah this is a great track for him to do that too he's had so much success here we dominated the race last night that every single lap and won it and four wins here in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series for Kyle Busch 
really been a tough uh, five six week stretch for this 18 team and uh, a lot of eyes on them to see what kind of potential championship contenders they might be in the upcoming 10 weeks and the statement they may or may not make tonight as you said DJ could really be important to that. Up to Kyle, he was optimistic. Uh, they had a test at Charlotte uh, with the Joe Gibbs racing team this past week. Felt like they found a few things that, that could help them as they start their chase bid. So Kyle Busch, after starting in 20th place, has uh, picked up a few. He's riding in 17th now. Just underway in Richmond, Brad Kozlowski, the early leader. We're back after this message and a word from your ABC station. Brad Keselowski, the early leader in tonight's NASCAR Sprint Cup Series race at Richmond International Raceway. Just the 18th lap completed there, though Keselowski has led all of them from pole position where caution-free at this early point. Reminder to visit Chevy.com and learn more about the all-new Chevy Silverado, the 2014 North American Truck of the Year. On board with Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s Chevy, back in 21st place. Chief Steve Letarte told me this afternoon he thought they had a decent car, but it might take him a while to get there. Leader has caught the tail end of the field in some lap traffic now. 66 car, Joe Nemechek, the first one to go a lap down. It's the difficult thing as a driver and being the leader of the race. You catch these guys racing side by side. They're trying hard to stay on the lead lap, get as much as they can, but Trying to figure out where they're going and get a groove that you can be in and, and get past him without losing too much time. 93 J.J. Yaley was the car that pulled to the inside, let the leader through, gave him that low lane. Travis Quapple 32, Ryan Truex 83 also going a lap down here in this early going. Two car really, really good on the bottom, getting a nice drive off, and that's making them, allowing him to pull away and then deal with the lap traffic too. Doc Punch's report on Jamie McMurray just before the green flag saying if you were a car that already had a place in the chase better watch out well better watch out because McMurray's got a fast car also. They led 148 laps at Bristol He's got a good short track program and his lap times right now are about second quick. He hadn't had to make anybody mad yet. Yeah. <laughs> about it. It's early. He's going to save that. <laughs> We talk about that and joke about it, but it is such a very real possibility. 
You know, they, I mean, it could be just that you get that desperate right at the end and that opportunity is right there in front of you and you may have to use that. Well, because of the change in championship system, if you're new to NASCAR, this system is new for this year where if you win, you get a place in the championship group. Uh, now you come down to that one night and the backup for drivers to fill the rest of the places in the championship grid is people without wins based on the season long points that you accumulate each and every race. You come down to this final race, you're too far back in points to have a shot. It's still the beauty of the system that you can win and get in on the last night. Trick is they're only going to give out one trophy at the end of the night and there's only going to be one winner. There's only going to be that and that's why none of this can be settled as we look and and maybe talk about scenarios towards the end of this race. But until lap 400 hits here, it's not going to be definitely decided until that point. Now watch Harvick. He's really working the top of the racetrack. And it's finally now starting to make a little time up there. He has some experience. He ran a lot of time up there last night in the nationwide race. Found a groove, laid down some rubber. We did have Look a shower this afternoon. But that's almost a Darlington line there, isn't it? Yeah. Makes it fun. We used to do a lot of racing like that, that where this place was really three grooves. That hasn't been the case over the last few years, but this new tire has kind of dictated that you can, you can get up there and run. Lays down some rubber, and that's the biggest thing that these drivers are liking about this tire. The spotter that's up on the roof watching as an extra set of eyes for the driver and a safety spotter as well as noticed uh, other team spotters have noticed what Kevin Harvick's doing. Harvick's back to about 40%, working behind Jeff Fiveback. He ain't that pulled Jeff off the bottom last lap as well. Harvick's running the exact same line as the Nationwide car, just about two car widths lower, though, as far as his own radius. So you're the guy behind the wheel, and your spotter's telling you that. And what are you doing with that information? Well, at some point in time, especially if you're Jeff Gordon in this situation, you've got to go up and give it a try. But I think it takes a little bit of time to get in that rhythm. How far do I need to drive in the corner to get my car set and get the maximum speed? When can I get back in the throttle? So it takes a little getting used to it. It's not like you can just say, okay, I'm going to jump up here, especially when you haven't done it here at Richmond in a few years. Yeah, this is Harvick's, you know, 10th, 12th, maybe 15th lap of running up there. And he's just now getting kind of in that groove you're talking about and starting to make some speed. And the thing that I see different with Harvick than what Jeff Gordon was doing there, Harvick is making a wider entry into the corner. Doesn't really dive off into the corner all that hard, but Jeff was trying to go in in the middle, let his car wash up, and then get a turn back. Harvick's doing a better job that won't abuse the tires quite as much, plus gets him a better exit of the corner and making more speed. Certainly uh, making it a bigger racetrack. Our Pennzoil telemetry, 147 miles an hour into the corner on this a little three-quarter mile short track. Still getting it plenty fast here at Richmond. So Harvick up to second behind Brad Kozlowski. 20 laps away from a competition caution.
opening laps of the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series race at Richmond International Raceway tonight. It's caution free so far with Brad Keselowski out in front. Kevin Harvick trying to chase him down in traffic. He's run him down from about three quarters of a second back and run right up to him. Yeah, Brad's been forced up there because of lap cars, but Harvick is choosing to be up there. And watch how much higher Harvick goes, though. I mean, he's trying to make a hole on the outside of, of Brad. He seems to be in the outside lane, but he's not all the way up to the wall like Harvick is. We'll get a run here in just a second. If he doesn't get a run into. Uh huh. That's, that's the kind of thing, though, that, that, that get the tempers flared a little bit in this short track racing because, you know, Harvick's been running that high lane and, and that two car hadn't been near that high until he got there and it moves up right in front of him. That's got to aggravate a driver a little bit. Oh, it does. Yeah. You see him not doing that at all. You know his intentions and what he's trying to do. But it's way early, so you can keep your cool about it for a little bit. Got him here. Yeah, it's just too much speed that Harvick's able to carry through the center. You can see how much quicker he can run. And then that speed that he's got is magnified down the straightaway. Looks like he has 20 more horsepower. Oh, he does have Hendrick engines. <laughs> well, that certainly <laughs> helps. That Doug Yates engine in that two car is no slouch, though. All right, so there's your first lead change of the night for now. As Kevin Harvick is by Brad Keselowski. Right there to the start finish line. Six time Richmond winner Rusty Wallace watching this. Rusty, we haven't seen this high lane used like this at this track really for what? Three, four years now. Yeah, maybe so, Alan, but I keep watching this thing going. That's the line we always ran. That was the, the preferred line, the top line was. You, you'd qualify, you would practice on the bottom, and then about, you know, three quarters or about halfway through the race, I guess, when everything got all slick. Everybody went to the top of the race. Then on restarts, you run the bottom for about 10 laps, then shoot right to the top. I just like what Kevin's doing. I mean, he's searching all over the racetrack. We saw him last week in Atlanta where the bottom, he would not get off the bottom of that racetrack. Now he's on the top and won't get off the top. But this is the preferred Richmond line, in my opinion. I like what Kevin's doing. And Dale and Andy, you guys are spot on. I mean, you get so much momentum on the top of that racetrack if you get a good bite up there. And remember, this is a new tire. These tires are hard and more staggered. That makes you want to run on top of the racetrack with that design tire. Well, I've seen it run high here, Rusty, but in three and four, I'm not sure I've ever seen it run as high as they are tonight already. I mean, we see Harvick within just a, actually a couple of feet of the wall. Have you, do you remember it being that high here before? I just really think it's the tire uh, caused them to get up to that quick because all the drivers I'm talking to are saying this is a very conservative tire. It's pretty hard. And like you guys said earlier, it's got more tire staggers, so it's going to make the cars a little bit looser. And we all know the exit of turn two is the toughest spot at this racetrack because you get really loose there. And that top line, as you exit, makes that transition easier. Yeah, one thing that Harvard's going to have a problem with, are now there's more people getting up there and running that. That's good in the sense that it helps get some rubber down there and keep that down, but it's going to make it more difficult when he catches these cars because a lot of them that are running up there are the slower cars. And I did talk to some people in the garage this morning or this afternoon that said, if more cars run up there, it, it'll rubber up and it might even get slicker. Yeah. And they may end up coming back down. So I do agree with Rusty on one point that when they do put new tires on, the fast lane is going to be on the bottom for a good few, uh, what, 20 laps or so. Coming up on that competition caution, again, a little brief sort of mini cloudburst here this afternoon. It rained hard for about, oh, I don't know, 30 seconds. <laughs> really hard and soaked everything down. Greg Biffle, 16 there, trying to get a spot on his teammate Stenhouse in the 17 and Kyle Busch in the 18. And so NASCAR going to put that caution out here in a moment to allow the teams to change tires and just make sure that the tire wear isn't excessive in this opening part of the race with the green racetrack after the rubber was washed off. Well, Harvick almost got the wall there in the center three and four. There 
is the caution. Yellow is out, nice and easy here. Competition yellow. Martin Truex was kind of holding his breath there, hoping that Harvick wasn't able to get to David Gillen to put him a lap down. He should get the free pass to Martin Truex. Confirmed from NASCAR scoring. So Kevin Harvick, a two-time winner this season, but been a long time since he won the race back at Darlington Raceway in the month of uh, April. Been close a lot of times, like last Sunday in Atlanta, but hasn't won since April. And uh, the belief that in these 10 races upcoming to decide the championship, you're going to need to win. It sure be a big momentum-building thing for this team to close the deal tonight and find a way to get that victory. They've had the fastest car basically all season long. I'm surprised they don't have five wins as fast as this car has been. Pit road still closed here to the leaders while they sort the scoring order out, get everybody lined up where they belong. So while we wait for the pit road to be open in the first uh, set of stops, quick reminder, next weekend's action is at Chicago Land Speedway. Double header for us. Saturday, the Jimmy John's Freaky Fast 300 for the NASCAR Nationwide Series. ESPN 2 at 3.30 Eastern Time. And next Sunday, the opening race in the chase, the MyAfibStory.com 400, 1 Eastern on ESPN. The first round in this new championship format that features eliminations, three race bursts, if you will, uh, after which drivers get dropped from title contention. It's going to be uh, a pressure packed time for these race teams, for sure. Yeah, these drivers faced it, and always, once you get to the chase, they faced pressure, but. They're still trying to figure out exactly how to go about this whole thing with the elimination part. Yeah, pressure's on pit crews right now, though. Bench. Kevin Harvick loose in and loose off. It's going to be four tires and air pressure adjustment and one round out of the right rear, filling it up with Sunoco fuel. Jamie? Clint Boyer gained two spots already, saying too much wheel in it. Needs to turn a bit better. Four tires to chassis adjustment. Doc? A lot of biggest screen, Brad Kozlowski said, I'm okay on the short runs, but the car gets loose in and loose up off on the long runs. They made an air pressure change in the right front. Going to put four tires on it, get it completely full of Sunoco fuel, find the hustle, and he will be the first car off pit road. The advantage of winning pole position and getting to select that first stall at the end of pit road. As Clint Boyer had the momentum coming down the pit lane, but our autos don't race off pit road showed Brad Kozlowski the first car out.
downtown Richmond, Virginia on what has been a steamy, steamy weekend. Daytime temperatures uh, in excess of 90 degrees, although a cold front supposed to come through later on tonight, and the next few days should be perfect. We're just hoping tonight stays dry as that front closes in on the area. 84 degrees right now as we get ready to go back racing uh, at lap number 57. Brad Keselowski first off pit lane, Clint Boyer second, Kevin Harvick third, Jeff Gordon is fourth. I know it feels bad, but you're good. You know, Kevin's the best, Brad's very similar to you. We're gonna get you better here. No, you're already my hero, especially after today and that speech, but uh, you go up to a whole another level on the all-time list. My gosh, this thing is handful. Uh, that means they're having fun, I think. <laughs> I think it means this car is a handful. Right? This guy running fourth. This is just how much of a struggle this racetrack is for these drivers tonight. A little bit of a struggle getting going in that outside lane on the restart for both Flick Boyer and Jeff Gordon. Jamie Murray taking advantage of that, getting himself up in that third spot. Driver that needs a win. Both Boyer and McMurray, as well as Kyle Larson, three drivers that need to win. Yeah, their pit crews are getting it done. You see, those are really good pit times. They made spots up on pit road. Clint Boyer's team down in the 11 second bracket. Yeah, and all three of those drivers uh, ran themselves up into the top 10 uh, throughout that entire first 50 laps there. The pit crew does a nice job, pumps you up a little bit more. So with uh, Clint Boyer running in fourth position and Greg Biffle down in 16th, the gaps are a little bit closer than they were at the start of the race, provided there's no new winner tonight. Yeah, but seeing that uh, 15 car up there inside the top five, we'll put a little more pressure on 16, on Greg Biffle seeing that, is crew chief seeing that? So uh, the pit crew's gonna see that, gonna add a little bit more pressure to that entire team. A lot of cars still on the lead lap here. That's the big thing throughout this night is a lot of cars stay on the lead lap, especially as cautions fall that way. So that's why you can't ever feel safe until this thing is completely over. Because all it takes is an ill-timed flat tire or that's it. getting out of the groove one time. And next thing you know, you're running 25th instead of 10th or 11th like you were. This is a definitely a Yogi Berra night. <laughs> it's not over till it's over. Ryan Newman lost a couple of spots on pit road, had some traffic problems, got uh, blocked in or blocked out of his pit stall by uh, Justin Allgaier's uh, pit stop and lost a couple of spots. So Newman trying to dig back a little bit. He's in 11th place now. And Jimmy Johnson, 48 car, started third. There he is back racing Denny Hamlin for ninth and 10th. And Jimmy lost uh, about four or five spots before that caution came out from the time that the, the race started. But they were able to adjust on it and make it any better where he can be making some passes instead of getting out of uh, other people's way. How, what's he saying about this car, Dave? Really loose off at the end of the run, DJ. He started out the run just reporting loose in and tight in the center, which is pretty normal for Richmond. But at the end, it was loose off, and they made some adjustments to try to give Jimmy a better handle as he exits the corner. I know that everybody is saying, and that uh, probably the two of you up here that that I work with all the time that, you know, don't worry about the 48 because he's going to be fine once the chase comes. <laughs> I, I'm not a believer in that this year. I know we've seen it many, many times, and uh, I just haven't seen the speed out of this 48 that, that shows me that they can just turn everything around and rebound and go full bore again. Greg Biffle giving up a spot to Tony Stewart, so Biffle back to 17th. Stewart there in 16th, another one of the drivers that could get in with a win. Jimmy Johnson. Being challenged by Ryan Newman on the right side of the screen. Jimmy kind of feels like in the last few weeks their performance has gotten better. They've just had some, he, he called it wild luck, that's kept them from getting all of the results. But he said, even we had that little rough stretch where we didn't finish races, 
the last few weeks we finished the races and we've run well so I feel better about it as we go toward this championship. I mean how can you not take a six time champion and say he's going to be one of the favorites. Yep. I, I promise you I won't remind you of what he said tonight if he wins. <laughs> hey I'm, I'm not saying that he can't. I'm just saying they're going to have to show me better performance because there's some teams that are yeah. performing better. You know when you look at a weekly basis with speed when you have Kevin Harvick and Jeff Gordon there week in and week out uh, both Keselowski and Logano it, then you've got your work cut out if you want to be part of that four at Homestead. And I'm sure he probably will but they've got some work to do. Brad Keselowski doing work right now out in front of the field at Richmond. Riding with race leader Brad Keselowski, champion from a couple of years ago in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series Federated Auto Parts 400 at Richmond International Raceway. Just the one caution and Keselowski's done most of the leading in the opening stretch of the race. Well, Monday night, it's back. The traditional opening week doubleheader for ESPN's Monday Night Football. Giants trying to get back into playoff contention this year after a disappointing year last. Taking on the Lions and the nightcap, the Chargers and the Cardinals. Monday Night Football. Chargers Cardinals at 1020, Giants Lions at 710 before that on ESPN and available live on Watch ESPN. Somebody said the Giants are trying to get their preseason record incorporated in since they didn't lose. Like to like to get that uh, yeah, wrapped around things. Forward, yeah. yeah. That's the only thing that's better than regular Monday night football is the opening Monday night football when we get to see two games. Twice as nice. Jeff Gordon and Clint Boyer locked up in a race here for fourth and fifth. Boyer restarted second. Gordon restarted fourth. The outside lane had a little trouble getting going. That's a theme we'll see throughout the night. A lot tonight, I believe. And now they're trying to uh, race each other and regain some lost ground. Jamie McMurray in the one is the uh, car for position next ahead of them. McMurray running in third. And these three are right there together, but they've uh, kind of lost touch with those first two. Three point eight seconds behind race leader Brad Kozlowski. Well, Brad has certainly established who has if it comes down to a short run at the end of this night. And he's anywhere close to the front. He will be the man to beat. Warrior is one that usually likes to run that bottom side. He he likes to set his car up there 
uh, make his car do what he needs it to do on the bot on very bottom of the racetrack. But this is going to be one of those nights that you're going to have to search around where because there's cars running all over the track and you're going to have to try to find speed wherever you can find it. And the opportunities there in a lot of different groups. Is this a way? I mean, they're, they're using all these high line high lanes and in different places of the racetrack. Does it change the balance of the race car that much? There's no doubt that it will change the balance. And, and that's what you have to do is search around and see, OK, if I'm going to move off the bottom, it's because I don't have the grip and the balance that I'm needing there and have the speed. So we're going to try probably try a little bit of the middle, which is kind of what Clint's doing there. He's moved up about a car length. And then you somebody like Harvick that likes to go right to the top. But it does change that. And so you have to be ready to adjust your driving style for that change of balance. Well, uh, gaining ground on that round of pit stops, Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s team jumped up quite a bit. Now here he is getting rolling, trying to pass Kyle Larson for 11th place. And Kyle lost about five spots from the uh, restart. Kind of made up a spot or two right there in the beginning of the run and then uh, just kind of started slipping back. Junior was kind of funny in his press conference here this weekend. He was asked about, you know, he won the season opening race. So right from the Daytona 500, he's pretty much known he was going to have a place in the championship. And he was asked if uh, if they've sort of been on holiday all year long. <laughs> because, well, he, from pressure, you know, I think that was his phrase, actually. He said, yeah, we've sort of been on holiday all year long uh, after winning that first race. And we've enjoyed that. But now the pressure is about to climb back on our backs. Uh, as they begin this pursuit of a championship, he knows his fans have high expectations after the way that he's run this season with three wins. But he said, we're ready for it. We're going to give it our best shot. We'd love to be the champion this year. That's the, that, the, what you just said. There's the mood in the garage area for the winners that have won this year. They're locked in the chase and they've enjoyed that less pressure. Now, they're still out there trying to win races. They're gambling. They're doing things and, and getting more wins. But this is the last night of taking, you know, just a kind of a happy go lucky approach to these things. They have to really be focused for these next races to make sure they make the cutoff. Change for fourth place there. Jeff Gordon by Jamie McMurray. And Kyle Larson slide looking like it might continue for another spot. Jimmy Johnson there working on him. Yeah, it doesn't look like uh, whatever adjustment was made to this 42 is one that uh, helped this car at all. It's not to Kyle Larson's liking right now. Downstairs to Jamie. And Kyle Larson's telling his crew he's just over rotating in the center. He wanted to be a little bit tighter. They made a track bar adjustment on that stop. And yeah, that didn't help him a whole lot. Now his crew chief, Chris Heroy, told me something funny earlier. He said, Richmond is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get because the track is constantly changing. Meanwhile, Chip Ganassi on the left-hand side, he hasn't had a car in the chase since 2009. He's keeping his fingers crossed for tonight. Right now, Larson driving one of Chip Ganassi's entries. You see there running back in 12th place, Jamie McMurray, and the other Ganassi car running in fifth. Brad Keselowski logging laps out front. We're back after this from your ABC station.
A look at the race for the lead here at Richmond. Riding with Brad Kozlowski, the red car's Kevin Harvick coming up to try and take it away from him again. We're 39 laps into this green flag run since the restart. In the first run of the race, it was 43 laps of green flag racing when Harvick came up and passed Kozlowski. So things are right on schedule, it would appear. Almost like you can set your watch to it. Harvick trying to find his way through some of this lap traffic right now so he can continue his pursuit of the race lead, Vince. Well, they were a little loose in and loose off. They addressed that during the pit stop with the chassis adjustment, but they're also keeping an eye on another issue, Alan. Couldn't get that tape to come off the bottom there. Let's keep an eye on it. We'll get some off the top next time. I was trying to get the bottom because it has more holes. They wanted to pull that piece off, uh, that piece of tape off the front during that pit stop, but just couldn't get it off. Kevin, by the way, complimenting the team after that stop for its uh, strong efforts. Kevin Harvick in the four. So Vince talking about uh, wanting to get a little bit of tape off for the car's cooling and not being uh, successful there. So uh, something they'll try again on the next pit stop. That could help his loose situation a little bit too, if they can get just a little bit of that. Harvick continuing to pursue Brad Keselowski for the race lead as we cross the one quarter mark of this race tonight in Richmond. 100 down, 300 to go. Keselowski's done most of the leading tonight. We check out our most laps led, brought to you by Sprint. And you'll find that Brad Keselowski has led nine tenths of the race. 90 out of 100, even by my math standards, that's <laughs> nine tenths. Stay connected to the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series with the Sprint Family Share Pack. 20 gigabytes of data, high-speed data to share, plus unlimited talk and text for $100 a month. Learn more at Sprint.com slash data share. Brad Keselowski looking for his fourth win of the season. Now, one of those other small details at stake tonight, looking ahead toward the championship, is uh, if uh, you could be the one that, that separates from the pack and gets that fourth win, the five drivers that have three wins apiece, then you'll be the top seed going into the championship. And uh, just three extra bonus points to start. The three points can be the difference between winning and not winning. It could. I, I think it's probably as much of a confidence thing uh, boasting thing for the team to, to be that number one seed and, and as the driver. Uh, the three points is certainly would be nice if you can separate yourself from the rest. Then there's no saying, okay, there were five of us and I might be listed as the number one seed. This way you would know that if one of those five drivers is able to win tonight. And Brad looking the best uh, to accomplish that here tonight so far. Doc? Yeah, DJ, he'd had a little bit of an issue with the car being free in and, and especially getting free up off. They made an air pressure change in the right front. And Brad said the car was perfect for about 10 laps. And now Paul Wolf has listened to his driver on the radio. And what Brad had said was, we're starting to lose some drive off, getting free up off. Brad's been working the different lines. The line has widened out and allows Brad to try to move the car up across the racetrack to help the drive off. But in long runs, right now, that is their weakness. They start losing a grip coming up off the corner. Yeah, there's a couple of things. That I'm not sure what I need. I just know I need something to lean on. Yeah, there's a couple of things there. This Richmond has always been a racetrack that you get freer as you go along. And but if you're going to run the car that hard and down on the bottom, then you're probably going to abuse that right rear tire just a little bit in making that happen. So when he strikes out there, He's going to make the tire go away a little bit quicker like that. So maybe a little bit of adjustment and then a little adjustment in the way that he's driving it to take off and get such a big lead. Kozlowski got his best finish ever in an NASCAR Sprint Cup race at this track in the April event. That was a fourth. He's looking to finish first in this one tonight.
little interesting for the race leaders in the Federated Auto Parts 400. Brad Keselowski two, Kevin Harvick four, caught in a maze of cars trying to either keep from going a lap down or keep from going another lap down, or just barely hanging onto their race cars as they're slipping and sliding around there on the racetrack. Yeah, they're at that point now with the laps on the tires that it is difficult to hang on to your car. The drivers that you're trying to pass are obviously having a much more difficult time, so you're trying to make sure that you're keeping an eye on them and get that drive off the corner that you need. 17 Ricky Stenhouse is trying to stay on the lead lap 24th place. Unsuccessful. This race for the lead. Harvick was running up to Kislowski then it kind of stabilized Harvick slipped back a little bit now they've caught the traffic here comes Harvick again. And Clint Boyer. Seeming like he's running these two down and having a little easier time coming through some of the traffic. Made right up about a second and a half of the deficit he has to the leader, Brad Keselowski, in about the last seven, seven to ten laps. It's really interesting. You've got the leader, the two car. He's running right on the very bottom of the racetrack. Harvick's running right against the wall on the top, and the 15's running right in the middle. So it's a matter of where you catch the traffic from those perspectives. That'll be a pretty good race when they come together. <laughs> Right now, that's exactly what's happening. Al Maroli riding with their last car on the lead lap now, 23rd place. Looks like Harvick's got a run here. Oh, boy, he got close to that ball off turn four. Look, he's used to it now. He does it about every lap, so. Yeah. It was like an inch that time. Now you can see Brad went up there to try to kind of blocking, take some air away from the front of Kevin's car as he went into turn three. Brad's car is just not very good up there. Kevin's is. Didn't take Kevin long to make that happen. Looked like we got some problems with the 20 car here. Matt Kenseth. Just got the fence here a little bit, guys. Just be ready. Inside. Yeah, more than a little bit. Matt running at 11th place when this happened. Yeah, that's, that's the problem with running up that high. You don't have much room to catch it if it, get, if it gets loose like that one did get in the corner. Yeah, and trying to make that pass, you can see he was setting up for a pass there. He got in there a little bit hot, and when he got on the brakes, just oh, like Just get right side of it, I guess. Yeah, that right front looks uh, not too good. That angle that it's at there. Hey, he made pretty good contact. They probably knocked off the front suspension. We'll just put right side down and fix the fenders, I guess, for now. I think I'd go on to get four on it, personally. Run long enough that those lefts got a lot of wear on them. I think he rode around there a couple laps, hoping maybe uh, that he'd get a caution flag for some debris or something off that car. But here is Kenseth in. We stay under green for the moment with Kevin Harvick, now the race leader. Now caution for debris. Come back, caution south. Something spotted on the back straightaway. And yellow flag for the second time in this one. After Kenseth goes, what's now two laps down. I was just looking at this and the whole scenario with Biffle and Boyer and all of that. And the more laps that the leader was able to put, or the more times they were able to put cars a lap down, was really helping Greg Biffle's cause as he was able to stay on the lead lap. And it was closing up that, that points deficit or uh, buffer that he has between the 16th and 17th spots there. A look at the danger zone brought to you by Nationwide Insurance, that bubble spot where it comes to making the chase. Clint Boyer running in third place. Greg Biffle running in 15th. The, big, the most frustrating part of the night for Greg Biffle and Matt Fuchs is that 
no matter how good they run, they, if one of those cars, the one car of McMurray or Boyer wins the race, it kind of takes it out of their hands a little bit. Pit road closed here. NASCAR trying to get Matt Kenseth to stop on the racetrack because when, when he went off the pit lane, he continued past the leader, and that is not a lap that he would be entitled to because of where the leader was when the caution came out and so on. So they'll wait until they get Kenseth back behind the pace car and the race leader, and then open the pit lane for stops. Yeah, you don't know unless you try. They weren't ever <laughs> telling him to go around them for sure, so thought he'd give it the best effort. Make them call, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, let's see. First time around, it took 43 laps for Harvick to run Kozlowski down and pass him. That time it took 63. So that uh, ratio is swinging a little better in the favor of the two. They're probably making good adjustments on that car for the long run. Free pass to Eric Almarola here in Richard Petty's 43. He'll come back around onto the lead lap, and uh, that will put the 21st place car in cycle with the leaders. Kevin Hart had the lead the last time they made pit stops, and he lost it on pit road. We'll see how that four team does this time. Here is Harvick, Vince. Kevin says it's way better in and off than it was on that first run, but too tight in the center, so they're going to go up on the track bar half around, and they got to get that tape off the front because the car is a little too warm. Jamie? And the 15, Clint Boyer said he's just too loose that run. Doesn't want to get looser, doesn't want to be tighter. A four-tire stop, fill him up with Sunoco fuel. Doc? And the bottom is great. McMurray says we got the car tightened up. Now I'm pushing, but I'm sliding the rear, so they're going to take some wedge out of the right rear. Put left side tires on, that making it all four tires. And top it off with Sunoco fuel. Clock ticking for McMurray. He's trying to get off, and now he will slide out around the 22 car of Logano. Going to be some track position change hands there. Harvick and Boyer, both with little hiccups on their pit stops, cost them some ground there. Beautiful scene here at Richmond International Raceway as the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series gets the one to go signal and we go back racing in one more lap with Brad Keselowski now the race leader Clint Boyer Kevin Harvick losing a little bit of ground on the pit stops uh, cost him a little bit of track position. Like I said there's a lot of pressure on these pit crews tonight. So making that right side change trying to get around to the left. Oh the Jackman goes down hard right on that number that painted number there so it looks like where he slipped. That cost you a lot of time. This, this pit stop was about 15.6 seconds. So Boyer back to fifth place. Harvick back to third. 
Jamie McMurray now ahead of Boyer in fourth. Brad Keselowski the race leader as we go back to green. Starts being intense. Just kind of holding my breath there. <laughs> you weren't the only one. There's some drivers that were probably holding in their breath. Keslowski, Gordon, Harvick as they sort it out. McMurray settles into fourth. Now Boyer with Kurt Busch right behind him, applying some pressure. Kurt in that 41 car. Here's Kyle Larson trying to make a rally. 42. He's hoping they've made some better adjustments on his car. He's not happy with it in that last run. Ryan Newman right up in there. He's the one that I keep thinking about on these restarts when you see all this happening. That's the one thing that could be disastrous for him is one of these restarts because we only have two cars that are off the track right now as far and so uh, that would be the one disaster. And Matt Kenseth, Kenseth's car is off the track. Uh, they have taken it to do a little work on the suspension of that car after some wall contact. J.J. Yaley's car was retired from the race. Newman pretty safe coming in on the night. There's the work on the Kenseth car back in the garage area. Pretty safe on the night where points are concerned. If there's a new winner and it's not Matt Kenseth, then Greg Biffle stands to be the guy that's bumped out unless Newman just has a disastrous night and Biffle has, or Boyer, has a really, really good one. And Ryan Newman running at a track where, as he told us earlier on NASCAR Countdown, statistically, it's been a pretty good one for him over the last few years. Watched him race some. Uh, speaking of Ryan Newman here tonight and, and watching him just stop putting himself in any bad positions right now. It looks like he has a good car, and, and as things get strung out, he starts passing cars and going back towards the front, but he's pretty, been pretty solid inside the top ten. And we see this 42 car, Larson, going forward in this run. He went backwards the last time. Sounds like they've gone the wrong way on an adjustment. Just got an eighth spot. Sorry, DJ from Newman. Yeah, no, nope. I was going to say just one more adjustment like that, and he'll find himself up there battling for something. <laughs> Feeling pretty good about it. Yeah, if only it were that easy. But Yeah. Here's Greg Biffle racing with Tony Stewart, 14th and 15th place. DJ, you've been in that position before uh, when you raced for championships where you had a point lead, and in effect, that's where Biffle is at in this race. He's got a point lead. And that's what's going to matter unless someone wins who hasn't yet won this season. Yeah. What's it like inside that helmet? You know, you just talked about Newman and how, you know, just trying not to put yourself in bad positions and so on. That's got to be so counter to your instincts. Yeah, way harder than racing to win. I yeah. mean, yeah, they, they certainly want to win, but they, they also know what's at stake. And they can't do anything foolish that would take them outside that top 16 that they're sitting there in now. So trying to do something that's not in your nature, not what you do every single time that you buckle inside of these cars and put that helmet on. It's difficult because it takes a different mindset and you're not used to that, so it takes a little adjustment on your part. Kind of like saying to a baseball pitcher, okay, go into the game, just don't walk anybody. <laughs> yeah. That's the first thing that happens, right? Pitch carefully, but just don't walk anybody. Maybe not the best analogy, but it's the one I came up with at the moment, you know? Sounded good. <laughs> Back after this from your ABC station.
A little bit shy of halfway in tonight's NASCAR Sprint Cup Series race at Richmond International Raceway. The one race to decide who makes the chase. Brad Kozlowski's done most of the leading tonight. The chase begins next weekend at Chicagoland Speedway. Our weekend doubleheader has the Jimmy John's Freaky Fast 300 for the NASCAR Nationwide Series. Saturday, 3.30 Eastern on ESPN2. Their championship fight down to just the eight final races. And then next Sunday, the MyAfibStory.com 400, 1 Eastern, ESPN, round 1 of 10 in the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup. Big, fast, mile-and-a-half track. Older pavement, kind of like this. Cars will be sliding all over the place, using all the different lanes on the racetrack. Should be a fun one next Sunday in Chicagoland. Yeah, who's going to be that first driver of the 16 to get a win? Move themselves right on to the next round. Well, we saw Kyle Larson going forward a little while ago. Now we see him sliding backward a spot. Ryan Newman getting by Larson for eighth place. Now Jimmy Johnson there to challenge. Yeah, these race cars are funny things, aren't they? Up the words than that sometimes. Yeah. Robert. <laughs> Update from Pit Road. Here's Jamie. Well, Kyle Larson's biggest concern all race so far has been tight in the center. And on the first stop, they went down on the track bar. Wrong direction, of course. So the last stop, they went up two rounds. And it helped him a lot. And he said the longer the run goes on, he's kind of losing the center. But the exit is good. So still, he's good, even though he's given up positions, Alan. All right, Jamie. Well, it's definitely better than it was. I think they might need to go another couple rounds on that track bar. Yes, you're saying all the time, Andy, that you used to want to fix that first thing. And if you can fix that center, then your drive off may be better. Now, what happens is, is that when you have that car tight in the center and shoving the front tires, it, it wears obviously the right front. And then what you're doing is you're, the driver is going to make it turn some way. So you use the throttle to do that. And then the right rear goes, and then you lose all that drive off. So then nothing's going right. Check our Pennzoil telemetry and see the difference in center of the corner speeds between turn one and two, where Larson's headed now, and turns three and four. That was a little better than 140 miles an hour going into that corner. Back stretch a little shorter, shorter though, and it won't quite carry the same speed off into turn three. About 10 miles an hour less. But you slow down to, in the center to about 90 miles per hour. Yeah, that's what I was looking at too. That's I always look at that minimum speed. You know, the, yeah, the big speeds uh, kind of get your attention, but for the real lap time, it's really how how much does the car slow down or how little does it slow down in the middle of the corner. Larson back to 11th place after giving up that spot to a Dale Earnhardt Jr. there. Up front, Brad Keselowski with a very solid lead of a little better than a second on Jeff Gordon, who has managed to keep Kevin Harvick behind him. So there's Gordon in second. Kevin Harvick now back in third position. That's absolutely horrible. Absolutely sideways. Therefore. Conditions changing. And uh, I, you know, I always I always find it funny. Um, the crew chief's response sometimes is just so flat like 10 4. And as you, are, as you as a driver, I think you, you get kind of mad and, and emotional on the radio because the, the, you're frustrated at the handling of the car. You might just want a little more than 10-4. Yeah, <laughs> that, that no big deal. Yeah. Here you are <laughs> trying not to wreck this thing and not lose any more spots, and be pretty nonchalant about it. Like, okay, well. Well, I mean, it's, it, all he's going to do is take that information, use it for the next stop to make an adjustment. There's nothing he can do about it right now. I, mean, he can, you know, I can understand the driver being frustrated, but the, you can't just run out there on the track right now and fix it. You had to wait till they make a pit stop. Tell it's, me something to make me feel a little better for a minute, though. Yeah. I think 10-4 is good enough. <laughs> <laughs> now Kevin Harvick led 17 laps in this one. Twice now he's run down Brad Kozlowski at the end of long runs. This time he's got to pass Jeff Gordon also.
NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at Richmond, presented by AutoZone. Brought to you by Nationwide. Nationwide is on your side. Degree with improved motion sense. The more you move, the more it protects. And the U.S. Postal Service, who's improving from the ground up because our priority is you. Richmond International Raceway. They've been hosting races on these grounds, NASCAR races, since 1953. Tonight, the 26th race of the 2014 season is being led by Brad Keselowski. A second and a third up on Jeff Gordon with Kevin Harvick, Jamie McMurray, and Clint Boyer rounding out the top five. Two cautions so far in the race, a competition caution at lap 51, and a caution for debris after Matt Kenseth bounced off the wall at lap 124. The majority of the laps led by that two car. The only other leader on the night, Kevin Harvick, in the four, who's led for 17 laps, because Lasky's led all the rest. Jamie McMurray, Clint Boyer, one in 15, the highest two running drivers who've not won a race yet this year. Both inside the top five, both hoping to win tonight and lock in a place in the chase. Right now, Clint Boyer trying to figure out where the best place to run on this racetrack is to help his cause. Kevin, I'm both my line here. And four. I think you need to be lower in three and four. Previous lap is fine. That's not good. Back to the bottom down there. 23 flat. 80s are fine, Clint, I'm telling you. That's all you got to do right now is run 80s. That's third, fourth quick every lap. Sit T5. Stay focused on these lap times, dude. Nice exit. Brett Griffin, the spotter, up on the roof of the grandstand, talking to his driver. Yeah, he's, he's a great spotter for Clint. He keeps him focused. Well, you saw Clint passing McMurray. So Clint up to fourth position now, 3.9 seconds behind the uh, race leader, Kislowski. Yeah, and seeing these two cars, the 15 and the 1, up inside the top five, has to really make this 16 team uncomfortable with what they're seeing because they know that if you're inside the top five, there's an opportunity to, to win this race, and then you're sitting on the outside looking in. And somebody else showing some momentum in this uh, stretch of the race. Right there, the 14, Tony Stewart. Tony started back in 19th place. That was just 11th place he took from Kyle Larson. And he has been steadily picking up spots for about the last 40 to 50 laps. Yeah, he's had basically a steady improvement since the start of the race. I talked I talked to uh, Greg Zipidelli earlier today in the garage, and he said that he had a good long run car. And right now, Dave, it looks like it's proven out. And his crew chief, Chad Johnson, gave Tony the opportunity to give feedback on his race car at the end of final practice yesterday. On a scale of 1 to 10, how much help do you need me to give you to start this race? He said less than one. He said the car is really pretty good. And though it started out a little bit tight, they've gotten the car better uh, through a couple of adjustments. Tony said last run, it's kind of neutral. It depends on how I drive it. I can make it better. And that's a sign of a pretty good race car. We're talking about Greg Biffle getting nervous. 15, the one car up front in the top five. This 14 gets in the top five. I'd get real nervous. Tony, a three-time winner here at Richmond. Winless yet this season. But uh, NASCAR announcing last week in Atlanta that if he would find a way to win either Atlanta last week or here in Richmond, they would give him the waiver from uh, the requirement that you attempt to qualify for all the races, and he would earn a place in the chase grid. So Stewart running 11th. And everybody's still chasing what we normally call the blue deuce, but here it's painted white. Brad Keselowski in the two.
Uh -huh. Federated Auto Parts 400 approaching its halfway point for the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series here at Richmond International Raceway. 20 laps to the midway point of this race. By the way, the rain still better than 70 or so miles away from us, at least on the radar that I looked at just a minute ago. Reminder, tomorrow, season opens for the National Football League for the majority of the teams. And get your NFL fix started at 10 a.m. Eastern time with Sunday NFL Countdown presented by Snickers, Chris Berman, and the gang. Get you ready for all the games with the latest news and updates from stadiums around the league right up till kickoff. And before you set your fantasy lineups, catch our experts when they provide the latest news, injury reports, and predict top performers on Fantasy Football Now, presented by Papa John's. 11 a.m. Eastern on ESPN2. Both shows available live on Watch ESPN. So Carl Edwards, 99, going a lap down. Winner of this race a year ago. Leaving us now, 20 cars on the lead lap. Casey Kane also overtaken by the race leader in this last little bit of the race. Let's go up to speed, get you updated on the status of uh, progress so far for some of these front runners. Dr. Jerry Punch is covering the race leader. Thank you very much, and he was our pole sitter, and just like in April here when he finished fourth, he's got a pretty good short run car, but back then he was running in the top five. Tonight he is leading as the laps progress after about 25 or 30 laps he begins to lose some of the drive off in the corner the car gets free up but he's been able to manage that with clean air and moving the line around but right now uh, the car is sort of going away a little bit the longer he runs now behind him is jeff gordon who dominated in that exact car here back in april leading over 170 laps when the race began tonight, Gordon was very free in, very free off, and tight in the center. A track bar adjustment the last pit stop has helped the car, but Jeff still has trouble running the top of the racetrack and loses the drive off when he gets toward, toward the very top. Fifth. Running in third is Kevin Harvick. Led 23 laps here in April, but crew chief Rodney Childers said we never really hit it. Well, they haven't really hit it yet tonight either, although Harvick has led 17 laps. Still says it's horribly loose. They've gotten better as the run has gone on, but now there's 60 laps into this run, and it hasn't quite come to them yet. Jamie? Ben Boyer started this race sixth right now, running fourth. Came into tonight's race 23 points out. Right now, as it runs, he's 10 points out. Cliff likes the car, says it's better this run. He loves that he's able to move around up high and down low. Don't count the 15 out yet, Doc. And how about behind him? Everybody knows that McMurray's got a win to get in. What a great race car. He began the night. The car was free in. They added some wedge. The car got tight in the middle. They came in the last stop and took wedge out of the right rear. He said the car is a little bit free now, but the track is really coming to him. He has got one good race car tonight. Hey, Kurt Busch's night. Ninth to fifth in the first 50 laps in a bad pit stop, lost five positions on pit road. And now he needs drive off the corner. If there's anyone who can help him with that, you think Daniel Canos would be the guy. He's the one who led Newman to a third place finish at the engineer position last year right here. And he said one of the things we had in that 31 car for Newman last year was drive off the corner, Doc. And let's check in on the 22 car. There's the yellow car for Joey Logano. He won here back in April. Right now, Joey says the car is a little bit free in and free off. They made uh, an air pressure and wedge adjustment. Not quite enough yet, but Joey knowing the track is changing, and it's going to cool off and uh, get a little less grip here as the track as the race evolves. Jamie. Well, Ryan Newman kicked off the weekend pretty well. Qualified 12, that's the best he's done in a while. And he's liked his car so much tonight, they haven't made a single adjustment. All they've done is change the tires and add fuel. You say in this run, the longer they go, the freer he gets. Dave? Jimmy Johnson would like to be the only driver with four wins heading into the chase. But they're going to need to, they're going to, need to tighten up that race car if that's going to happen. It's been loose most of the night. On this run alone, it started loose, got better, and then went loose again. So they're really chasing that factor in the 48, Doc. And back behind him, slowly he's coming toward the front. They're talking about Dale Earnhardt Jr. Started back outside the top 20. He said the car was a little, it takes off a little tight. And after about 20 laps, gets really, really good. They made some adjustments on Jr.'s car. And other than the fact that the left rear tire was worn completely out of the previous stop, he has got one pretty good race car. Alex? All right, Doc, there's your top 10. A driver who has won already this year is leading. So Clint Boyer running in fourth, Greg Biffle running in 17th. Your points gap 
where that bubble spot, the last place in the chase is concerned, is at 10 points or 10 places on the racetrack at the moment. Biffle doing what he needs to do, but still not out of danger by any stretch. A lot of racing still to go tonight here at Richmond International Raceway. The NASCAR Sprint Cup Series uh, about at the midway mark of tonight's 400 lap race here at Richmond International Raceway with Brad Keselowski dominating to this point. Leads the next couple of laps and he will have led 183 of 200 to this midway mark of the race. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, really impressive. And what's been the most impressive thing is this run is where the car is held on better than it has any other run up to this point. Now, an important thing might happen here in these next several laps. You've got to look at Greg Biffle in the 16. Talked about Biffle right now in position to do what he needs to do. But Biffle is now, as this leader, Kozlowski, has overtaken Eric Almirola, Paul Menard, and Austin Dillon. Biffle's the last car on the lead lap. If he gets overtaken by race leader Kozlowski and then Brad goes on to put more cars a lap down, that's going to put Biffle's team on a track where tire wear and fall off is a problem in a, in a pickle. Yeah, it's going to trap them where they can't make spots up until they get that lap back and then put them in the throes of the other cars that are lapped down to be able to pass them. And their strategy options to get those laps back then are limited because you can't as easily take the wave around by not pitting under a caution as you can at some other racetracks. Yeah, because of the tire wear and fall off you're talking about. Update on the Biff from Dave. Alan, it didn't seem like they were having that bad of a night, and after a good adjustment on the first pit stop, he called the car just a little whisker tight. After the last pit stop, however, he hasn't gone anywhere, and right now they've been searching the best line for Greg to run, thinking that on the bottom, he's been a little bit quicker. We'll see where he goes now, pursued by the race leader. Alex Bowman to pit road for a green flag stop, and he really had the brakes locked down to get there, boiling up a big cloud of smoke. Casey Mears also on the pit lane here. We are uh, getting to the point where we'll begin to see some of the leaders start to think about it as Kozlowski catches and overtakes Biffle. I just saw Ricky Stenhouse a minute ago get into the wall off the of turn four. So these cars really sliding around a lot right now. A handful for these drivers. So Andy, let's talk a little potential strategy for Matt Pusha. Next car that Kozlowski laps that's on the lead lap would be Danica Patrick. Two gets by the 10 and we don't see a caution. You bring that 16 on the pit road right away. Well, when you do that, then you for sure go two, maybe three laps down. 
And, and I think then if the call sheet comes out, which is very likely when you get this deep in a run, I, I think I'll just leave him out there for now. Why do you say the caution is very likely this deep in a well, run? Well, we've got, you know, we've seen brake heat be an issue where these right fronts blow out in these long runs. The tire wear doesn't seem to have been a problem, but we haven't seen a run. This is the longest stretch we've had under green so far tonight. So somebody else in other circumstances might try short pitting for the speed on fresh tires and banking on the whole run of green flag stops coming through. But you're Matt Pusha, you wouldn't. Well, he's got too much to lose. I mean, if he loses another two laps for Greg Biffle, I mean, it could put him in a really bad position. But you're banking on your driver hasn't been one of those using excessive brakes that yeah. it might get your car in trouble. And if that happens, I mean, <laughs> you just got to play the cards you're dead. You yeah. watch it, you monitor that brake key. It was really struggled over the last 15 laps of this car. He was just about a tenth off of what the team was running, but he's really been struggling here. 41, Kurt Busch, 31, Ryan Newman. That's for seventh and eighth place. Pretty good little tussle we pick up here. You'll see Matt Kenseth come into the picture behind them. 20 car back on the racetrack. Dave Burns called up from the garage and told us they were replacing control arms and right front suspension on that 20 car after he popped the wall earlier. Matt in 42nd place, 67 laps down. We'll see two more cars here possibly going a lap down with Danica Patrick and Denny Hamlin both right there in the two car. Which would not be good for Greg Biffle's situation. being kind of careful there. He's got a big enough lead just to kind of let things sort out. No reason to press the issue. This is by far the superior car here tonight. To this point, I should say. Yeah. We've seen so many times the superior cars not win this year. The fastest car doesn't always win it. In fact, the winner here in Richmond didn't lead for the first time until after halfway in the last five straight races here. Sorry, Kozlowski fans, I just report the facts. <laughs> All right, that's going to be another car lap down that'll put Greg Bittle the second car one lap down. Should begin to see some green flag pit stops with the race leaders soon. Pit crews get ready to go to work under the green flag in the Federated Auto Parts 400. Quick reminder, check out NASCAR.com for all your latest NASCAR information. 85 lap green flag stretch here. And uh, about to uh, see a round of pit stops 
under the green, kind of unusual on a short track, but sometimes happens. And Brad Kozlowski with a 3.7 second lead on second place Jeff Gordon. Dominant so far on the night. The, um, the Michigan fan behind the wheel of that too. Just a torrid pace he said. Hey, again, this run here has just been so good. I mean, the car, we saw him fall off before, but it just isn't doing that. Great adjustment. See Kyle Busch coming to pit road. 15th place, just got lapped by the race leader. He'll make the first move in. Vince. Kyle Busch says the car's great the first five laps, and then it turns wicked loose all the way through. You saw the chassis adjustment there in the window. Also going to make an air pressure adjustment. Four tires for the 18 of Kyle Busch. Comes into this race ninth on the chase grid. I was going to comment as he and Denny Hamlin got lapped. I don't know the last time that we saw on a short track in particular that yeah. all of the Joe Gibbs racing cars were not on the lead lap. By the way, I mentioned Michigan fan Brad Kozlowski. If you're a Michigan fan, you're better off here. Uh -oh. Michigan fan Brad, Michigan native, is winning. Michigan is not on the football side of things. Dave? Paul Menard needed a win tonight. Not, doesn't look like it's going to happen. Running 20th, one lap down. Drive off was better on that run, but looser in and tighter in the center. Try to make more adjustments to help Paul as they get it full of Sunoco fuel as well. Long stop there. Menard, one of the drivers, hoping to win and get in. But the night not going like he might have hoped best. This is kind of a difficult time, too, for drivers out there. We've got, got some that have pitted, got fresh tires. We've got others that are really struggling and trying to stay out of the way of these guys coming at a high rate of speed. A lot of things could happen. Look at that. Three wide there. Kurt Busch 41. Kyle Larson 42. That is a race for 10th and 11th at the moment. As some more green flag pit stops unfold, Vince. A.J. Allmendinger been fighting free, just no forward drive. They made a chassis adjustment, air pressure, four tires, stalls it now. They're going to have to give it a push. A tough night so far for the 47. But Allmendinger, part of the group of 16 by virtue of that stirring win at Watkins Glen in mid-August. He will be eligible to race for the championship starting next weekend in Chicagoland. He certainly earned his way into the chase with that victory that day. Casey Kane in, last week's winner at Atlanta. Another stirring win to get in, Doc. Made a huge chassis adjustment in the garage this morning to move it more toward the 48 set of Jimmy Johnson. Right now they have been loose in and loose off. They will put four tires. There's a chassis adjustment on the right rear. Trying to get it full of Sunoco fuel. Casey said the car has improved a little, but still loose on entry and a little bit free on drive off. The most forward running car to make a pit stop in the green flag sequence, Joey Logano. Gives up seventh place here. Logano, the winner of the April race at this track. And headed down toward Dock. They had commented before with a wedge change. They were trying to help the drive off. You hear me say drive off. The cars are getting three off. And again, they make an adjustment on the 22. The driver who won here back in April. He battled it in April and got better as the race of up. Really good pit stop. Same. Greg Biffle's car very tight in the center. He was really worried about his right front tire. It has lasted. Also free into the corner. Half a round of wedge out of the right rear. A slower stop. Actually, it's a really good stop. 12.2. Doc? Dale Earnhardt Jr. has said the car fires off tight, and after about 15 laps, it's okay. They call for a chassis adjustment on the left rear, four tires. Problems now with the left rear. Looks like they may be putting a rubber in the left rear, trying to get the fender pulled away. 18 seconds. Dave? Kurt Busch lost a position during this run, commenting to the team, this is the loosest we've been all night long. So they're going to make a wedge adjustment. They took a wrench over the wall. There it is. Plus air pressure adjustment to the right front and the left rear, Jamie. Clint Boyer has waited 66 races since his last victory. They need the 
car to be a little bit better if they want to make it happen tonight. A chassis adjustment there. Four tires stopped. The car was better this run. Meanwhile, the 31, Ryan Newman, they haven't made a single adjustment on this car. They've been happy with it. Got a little bit free that run, but got better. Vince. The four of Kevin Harvick, a two-time winner this season already. He's been running in the top five all night long. A chassis adjustment, four tires. So no go fuel. Car's just way too loose. Dave. Loose for Jimmy Johnson. He maintained his ninth position during this run. He'll get a wedge adjustment and an air pressure adjustment. They made a big adjustment on the last round, on the last round of pit stops. This one not so large, so they may be getting further ahead with the 48 car as he makes a 14. Waiting on the left rear now. It's a long stop for Jimmy. Brad Kozlowski, the race leader, will come in here. All the way down here. Followed by Jeff Gordon and Jamie McMurray. So after the Harvick team made the first move to pit road among the leaders, here's Kozlowski in now, Doc. Yeah, they said the track car adjustment really helped the car. Didn't get free nearly as quickly, so they will help it again. And they will make a slight air pressure change. Last side of your screen, Jeff Gordon said, right rear tire worn completely out. I've got no drive off. I can't run up high. Kozlowski's away. Gordon not at all happy with the tire he's got tonight. Jamie. On that last stop, they made big track bar adjustment. They did it again here. The car was better this time, but still a little bit loose. They work on the left side. They'll put four sticker tires on and wait and try to get it as packed full as possible, Alan. All right, Jamie, going to be a little track position. Change hands on that round of pit stops. As Brad Kozlowski holds on to the lead, he's in heavy lap traffic, and he's got Kevin Harvick now in second place behind him. That's Larson trying to stay on the end of the lead lap just in front of him coming up off the pit road in the 42. Same for Al Marola. Same for Austin Dillon. Trying to hang on and see if this cycle can work in their favor. Past halfway at Richmond. Back after this message and a word from your ABC station.
run 109 consecutive laps under the green flag here at Richmond International Raceway tonight. Brad Kozlowski's led basically all of those. <laughs> Traded the lead with Kevin Harvick a couple of times briefly tonight, but that two car has been dominant in this one. The cycle of green flag pit stops changed a little bit of running order, though. As you see the new order come across the top of the screen, remember that Kevin Harvick was third, Jeff Gordon was second before the pit stops. Now Harvick is second. Gordon is back to fourth. And there are now just 14 cars on the lead lap through this long, exhausting green flag run. So Jeff Gordon losing a bit of time there on the pit stops and a bit of track position. Here's the gap first to second. Kevin Harvick was 4.4 seconds behind the leader before the pit stop. So there's uh, the amount of time he gained. Remember that he stopped two laps earlier than Keselowski. Yeah, with well, this tire fall off too, that, that's a significant amount of time. We're talking about a second and a half, uh, close to two seconds a lap from new tires to tires that are worn out. Yeah, and, and also factoring into that, too, because the, Brad probably had some cars coming by him that were on fresher tires, so his t lap time's even slower yet. So that allowed him to lose even more time to Kevin Hart and a few of those others that pitted a little bit sooner. There's Clint Boyer. Now up to third. Jeff Gordon, now 4.1 seconds behind the race leader. He was 3.5 seconds behind the leader, but in second place to us start the cycle of pit stops. Joey Logano running in fifth place. And Greg Biffle right behind him in the 16. Biffle now 20th place, one lap down, and with Clint Boyer running in third and Biffle running back there, the gap between them now is just six points for the final place in the chase. Again, that with the asterisk that it is a driver who's already won this year that's leading in the race right now. I sense the pressure building inside that 16 car. Oh, you best believe it is. So that the a twist of plot in this one. A long green flag stretch that sent Greg Biffle back and put him very much in the danger zone while Clint Boyer continues to run solidly up front.
a sweltering afternoon has turned into an 82 degree night here in the capital of the Commonwealth as uh, earlier the fans filed in and now they watch the action at Richmond International Raceway. They used to build this thing as the, uh, the showdown after sundown I believe it was past halfway in this one now and a dominant performance tonight from Brad Keselowski who has led 237 of, of 254 laps thus far here tonight in Richmond. The chase begins next weekend. We go to Chicagoland Speedway and Joliet. Our doubleheader coverage tips off on Saturday with the Jimmy John's Freaky Fast 300. Note the Jimmy John's decals in Kevin Harvick's car Why we show you this. Next Saturday, 3.30 Eastern on ESPN2. Next Sunday, round one in the chase, the MyAFibStory.com 400 ESPN, 1 Eastern time. The new format with eliminations where the winner automatically transfers through, just like Dale Jr. talked about winning the season opener at Daytona. What a big thing that would be. Who wins that race next Sunday in Chicagoland? What a big thing that is for the opening three-race round of this uh, elimination-style chase. Keslowski, Red Car Harvick, there's Boyer. And now we wait a bit for Jeff Gordon, who is 3.5 seconds behind the leader in fourth place. Put weight on it. Sounds like something when you banged your foot or something, but not the yeah. case with a race car. And he's not big enough to make any differences. His weight, but what <laughs> he's talking about is the way that he drives the car, the way he approaches the corner, the amount of brake that he uses affects all of that of how much it gets on that left front. But that's that's a great description from a driver right there to understand and be able to feel your car that well. What makes him a four-time champion? Yeah, that's what you need. That's the kind of information the crew chief needs to kind of dissect. Uh, what's going on with the race car? What kind of adjustments to make? Uh, While Gordon catches Boyer, Boyer catches Harvick. Harvick is fallen back from Keselowski, Vince. Well, and Kevin Harvick really at this point needs a lot of help in the center. That's his number one complaint. And he says the front tires have started shattering, and that got the attention of the pit crew, immediately got to the wall. Looks like they're going to stay out. Rodney Childers communicating with his driver, but certainly keep an eye on the four. Yeah, one of the things that happens at these short tracks is the, the rear tires are going to go away no matter what at the end of these runs. And if, if the driver really starts harping on that, crews will start tightening the cars up. And what it does, it kind of aggravates the problem. It just starts really working on, uh-oh, we got a caution. Turn two, report of debris. This is going to be a chance for these guys to start adjusting on these cars. And I think that some of them have been going the wrong way on these adjustments. I have to tell you, it's been kind of funny because for about the last half hour as this long green run went on and a lot of cars fell a lap down, there have been more reports of debris on the racetrack called up from different cars down on the pit road. And NASCAR's had their spotters look, didn't spot anything. This one came without a call from somebody. NASCAR spotted something on the racetrack. Now they did try to tell them. You crew chiefs would never do that, would you? I'm getting lapped. I need a caution. Uh, there's a piece oh, of lap on the racetrack. <laughs> Okay, Brian Petty's got, you can see the pressure on his face. He, he's got to make something happen here. Got a car that's good enough up in the top three. If they can win this race. Hey, he's still got 138 laps yeah. to go. Sure, he's got to make a good adjustment here, though. And have a good pit stop, which they've had tonight. That wraps up a 131 lap stretch of consecutive green flag laps. Free pass, Eric Almarola, 15th place car. Time for the pit crews to go to work again. Vince. Kevin Harvick did not like the changes previously, so they're going to go back on those previous air pressure and track bar changes. Going to put a little wedge in the left rear to help him out. Four tires and Sunoco fuel. Jamie? Brian Patty told his driver, Clint Boyer, it's a four-man race here. We're going to put a little tape on the nose, four tires. The car was better this time, Doc. Brad Kozlowski had been complaining about getting free in the long runs. Now he said, I need to be a little bit freer on the short runs. We've got me too tight in the short runs in the first 30 or 40 laps. And so we made an air pressure adjustment. He is down and away, and he will lead them off pit road once again. Track position held by everybody in the top five there. Under caution at Richmond.
So much on the line here tonight at Richmond International Raceway, the final race of the regular season, the last race to make it into the chase, NASCAR's postseason. Welcome back. We are 134 laps to go, about to be 133 under caution for the third time. And hello to you from inside the Quick and Loans ESPN Pit Studio. I'm Nicole alongside Rusty and Brad. What a dominating performance so far by Brad Keselowski, which leads us to our five-hour energy rapid recap. Brad Keselowski has been out front for 249 laps, and for him, it's all about being the number one seed heading into the chase. Yeah, he just wants to win, to tell you the truth. If he wins, he'll, like you said, he'll be the number one seed with a three-point advantage, and that could come in handy later on. But right now, he's been dominating. The car's been fl flying, I called out there, really hooked up, driving perfect. Clint Boyer needs a win to make the chase, and he's doing all that he can. He's doing everything possible to get up front. He's, up, he's run, been running third for most of the night. He's got a good, strong race car. I don't know if he's got a winning car, but he's put himself in position, that's for sure. The guy in position right now for the final spot in the chase is Greg Biffle, but he does not have a great car. No, he does not have a great car. He's, lap, he's a lap down. The car is not handling good at all. He's a bag of nerves inside that car right now, and I don't blame him a bit. He's got to dig down deep for these guys. they got to fix this thing, because right now, in my opinion, Nicole, they're in big trouble. They really are. Yeah. Last night, Kyle Busch led flag to flag in the Nationwide Series race. Tonight, Brad Kozlowski has led all but 17 laps. It's the most laps he's led in a race all this season. However, I will say this about the Richmond race. In the last five races here, the eventual leader has not led until after halfway. Yeah, that's exactly right. And you know, Kevin Harvick, Jeff Gordon, and Joey Logano all have really good race cars. And let's throw Clint Boyer in there, who is desperate as well. I think it's a lot will happen on this restart and the next restarts. That will happen throughout the night. You brought it up. Restarts. It's going to be yeah. some restarts. The restarts are going to be something. Where you got to get them, brother. There is going to be another another stop yet because Keselowski ran 103 laps in that last stop. Uh, they're going to have to stop one more time. That's at least one key restart they're going to have to have. And I'll tell you what, if you spin the tires a little bit, you miss the gear, you do something, it can ruin your entire night. But the last couple of weeks, we've been just watching restarts after restarts. They got to nail them. That's a big thing. Let's go down to pit road, Dr. Jerry Punch. With Paul Wolf, well, Paul, if you're walking a thin line between not being too, too loose in the long run and being too tight early on, where are you now with the car? Well, hopefully we got a good happy medium now. Uh, the Miller Lite Ford's been real good all night. It's just, it's a fine line here when you get those long runs. You got to have, keep the drive in them, but uh, we got to have that turn for the short run. We think it's probably going to come down to that at the end. So just trying to walk that fine line and make the right adjustments. All about the balance, Alan, trying to keep it close here for Brad Kozlowski. All right, Doc, a couple of things here. Uh, as you look at the restart order, nine cars just took a wave around, did not pit under the yellow to put themselves between the leader and the pace car. None of them got back on the lead lap. A few of them got back on one lap down, including Carl Edwards, Ricky Stenhouse, Martin Truex, and a green flag waves here. Boyer took a look there and almost got run into from behind. seen that happen. Yes. That was important for Boyer to get that restart right there, though, get himself situated in that second spot. Jeff Gordon hung on the outside with Joey Logano now racing for fourth. It's interesting watching the exit of pit road where it looked like Boyer had the edge on Kevin Harvick and maybe just squeezed out of the gas a little bit before the scoring line to get third for the restart instead of second. Got like a man thinking all the time. Maybe Kyle Larson, he was just on the tail end of the lead lap when that caution came out. He's out there trying to pass Jamie McMurray for sixth place. I tell you, he ran in front of the leader, Brad Keselowski, for a long time to stay on the lead lap. And, and as Brad Keselowski was pulling away from others, he was holding serve, so to speak, there and stayed in front of the two car. So it looks like this 42 could be somebody we could watch. Been an interesting night for Larson, that's for sure. All it takes is just, you know, you've got this whole time to get your car or get the driver what he's looking for. You just hit that magic spark, you get yourself up in the top five, anything can happen from there. It's funny, Jeff Gordon was asked about Kyle Larson and said that he sees a lot of himself in Larson. Uh, the background that he came from, the way that he drives a race car and, uh, and so on, 
Uh, Jeff said that that with his background and his experience, he loves to see him rise to a whole new level, expects to see him rise to a whole new level next year as he begins to be comfortable with what he needs in a stock car. He said, don't underestimate the transition from the open wheel cars he was racing to a stock car. And now you can just see Kyle Larson moving forward on this second round of races at some of these tracks as we go through this year. I agree. I think yeah, that's a good uh, analysis of Kyle Larson. It does remind me a lot of Jeff Gordon. I'm glad to hear both of y'all say that, all of you, and especially Jeff, because I did a Sunoco rookie report with these guys and as Kyle Larson and I were doing that I had at the end of it I had to tell them give them a grade and tell them who I thought they reminded me of and I told him Jeff Gordon was exactly who he reminded me of as he came into this and that he had a lot of great things ahead of him and you know, brought a smile to his face obviously he said you know I've got a long way to go but we'll see what happens now look what Clint Boyer's done I know that a win gets him in for sure but he's only five points out of that cutoff spot on points by taking that second spot in the struggles that Biffle's having now. Yeah, with what we see with the lineup, though, Biffle's only got right now a couple of spots that he can slide back to close that up. So it's still looking like that it's going to take a win by this 15 car, but he's right there to get it done. Larson and McMurray, the two cars from Chip Ganassi's team, racing for sixth and seventh places. That 42 is really strong, like the first five, maybe six, seven laps. After a restart, then he's just kind of like another car for a little while. Are they, are, looks like they're making some adjustments on this car, though, Jamie. They have been. They've been working on that track bar all night. They went up again another round on the last stop, and actually they came on the radio, and Kyle said, you know, we're really going to struggle here for the first 25 to 30 laps, and his crew chief agreed. He said, just hang in there because we're going to get better, but they are getting happier with the car as they go. Yeah, I think he's right about that struggle in those 30 laps, but it's not those first seven laps, like five to seven laps. He's really strong there. And then those next, like, 25 laps is where he's struggling. 22 years old from Elk Grove, California, Kyle Larson gaining a lot of fans in his rookie season of the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. Back to Richmond after this message and a word from your ABC station. Brad Keselowski continues to lead the Federated Auto Parts 400 for the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series here at Richmond International Raceway. He's led all but 17 laps tonight, and we've completed 287. 
Not only has he led a lot of laps, he's also posted our top speed on the night. We checked that, brought to you by Sprint. Average lap there, fastest one we've seen tonight from Brad. Stay connected to the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series with the Sprint Family Share Pack. 20 gigabytes of high-speed data to share, plus unlimited talk and text for $100 a month. Learn more at Sprint.com slash data share. Let's see, he's leading a lot of laps. He's got the fastest lap. He's got the number one pit stall on pit road and gotten off pit road first on every set of stops. That's a pretty good looking night so far. I'll make a driver smile for sure with all of that. Here's third place. About to change hands. Jeff Gordon by Kevin Harvick. They're not making good adjustments on that four car. It seems like they're losing ground on every single pit stop they've made tonight. What you've seen out of this four. We talked about it's been a while since he's won Darlington back in April, but it seems like, particularly lately, he's been a factor each and every week. If you walk around the garage race morning every week for about the last two months, who looks good to you? The four car. So they're like the first number that comes off everybody, but they haven't closed. Projecting ahead 10 weeks. Is this Kevin Harvick's time to be champion? Or are they not quite there yet? Well, I think the jury's still out on that, Alan, because just like I said, they, they are the fastest team week in and week out. And even today in the garage area, everybody said the four car was probably the car to beat. But yeah, they do find themselves in positions where they don't capitalize on getting that win. And just those two wins, the, as fast as this car's been, I mean, really five wins is what they should have at this point. Uh, I think they're going to have to shore up some of these things that keep them from getting to victory lane before they're going to be champions. Yeah, they're certainly a championship caliber team, but uh, you're right. They, there's a few things that, that you see with them that could keep them from, from making maybe that last round if they're not careful because it's probably going to take a win to, to secure that. Vince? You know, it's interesting. At the beginning of the season, when these two got together, Kevin Harvick told Rodney Childers he wanted to qualify better and lead more laps. Well, they've earned six poles this season, and for the first time in Harvick's career, he's led more than 1,000 laps, almost 1,200 laps this season. At this time last year, he had led just 51. So they've made incredible progress, especially for a first-year team. And Rodney Childers told me today, he said, you know, I think we could have won eight races this season. We've got two races and five runner-up finishes. I believe we are a championship caliber team, but we've got to prove it over the course of these next 10 races. Tonight, guys, they've gone back and forth on their adjustments and just haven't been able to find the sweet spot that Kevin's looking for. Yeah, I think that's the thing, Vince. I, I, tonight, especially, they've just not made good adjustments. And it's put them further and further out every time they stop. Now losing another spot right here to Jamie McMurray. Yeah, it might not be too long before that 22 knocking on the back door. So Harvick slipping back here. Still a ways to go in this one, but his hopes of getting that uh, third win this season and joining the log jam at top. And by the way, if he were to get the third win, the tiebreakers would go to Kevin for all those second place finishes. Uh, right now looking a little distant and uh, with some work left to do. Brad Keselowski dominating. But Clint Boyer running second, Greg Biffle running 20th. It's going to be an interesting last 100 laps.
NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at Richmond, presented by AutoZone. Brought to you by KFC, the world's best chicken. How do you KFC? Viagra. And Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit us at geico.com or call 1-800-947-AUTO. Sultry is what I would call the night here in Richmond. 82 degrees, humid. Think we're going to beat the rain with this one. And we're into the final quarter of tonight's Federated Auto Parts 400. Uh, race dominated by Brad Keselowski. Rain forecast now not to get here till about 1 a.m. from what I'm seeing in the forecast and the radar. So that's good. Yeah, that's good. I had a tough night on the drivers inside these race cars uh, with the high heat and humidity that you've got. Long green flag runs. You're working hard out there as a driver. Let's see if that has an effect on anybody here towards the end of this race. Yeah, I think brake, you know, the brake heat is so much that these short tracks that just build up heat in that cockpit. To see Clint Boyer cut into this uh, lead of the two car just a little bit. Yeah, from what I've seen tonight, I've seen that, that 15 car and Brian Patty been making good adjustments, and it seems like as the night's gone on, that car has gotten better and better incrementally. The two's been good and kind of stayed pretty good. Uh, the four cars kind of dialed themselves out. This will look like a race that Clint Boyer can win. And our stats kind of proved it that no, you know, the winner has been the last five races not taking the lead till after halfway. We'll see. Yeah. 10 o'clock on the East Coast. Just joining us. The race to decide who makes the chase. The NASCAR Sprint Cup Series here at Richmond International Raceway. Uh, we are three quarters of the way through the race. And the race has been dominated by the driver who started on pole position. Brad Keselowski, who has led 290 of 307 laps that we've run. Watching our Pennzoil telemetry with Clint Boyer. Kind of speed he's carrying through the center of the corner here. Slow down a little bit more than you'd want to right there, but traffic's got something to do with that. He tries to set that up to make the pass. You plant such a disciplined short track driver, and it doesn't seem to match his personality. You know, he's kind of kind of out there. You think he's happy-go-lucky, but he's very disciplined, and that's what it takes to be good on a short track. Not overdriving it, not overworking one corner or the other of the race car. Yep. So he's got some company there for a second right now, though. Jeff Gordon closing in, despite not being terribly happy with his race car and some radio transmissions that we've heard. He's gaining ground for a second place. Again, the story of the night tonight. Final positions available in the championship run that starts next week. A driver could win tonight and get in. Otherwise, the final spot on points to be decided, it looks like, between Clint Boyer, Kyle Larson, and Greg Biffle. Biffle had it starting the race, but he's struggling. A lap down in 20th place. Boyer's running second, and Kyle Larson's running eighth. Other drivers running well who have not yet won this season. Jamie McMurray's in the top five in fourth position, and Tony Stewart has just cracked the top ten in tenth spot. So three of the drivers in the top ten at the moment have not won this year. The other seven spots occupied check that four of the drivers Ryan Newman hasn't won this year also Newman has a place in the chase on points basically uh, about no matter how the night turns out at this point but yeah very solid though uh, great he's been up in that sixth seventh spot pretty much most of the night so you have to like the effort that they put forth yeah, unless something really goes wrong in this last hundred laps of the race for Ryan Newman Flint Boyer running in second Jamie well, Andy, you were talking about the adjustments that Brian Patty has made. If you look at the front grill of the 15, the only thing they've done the last two stops, slap a piece of tape on there. And that little bit of tape is making a big difference. Clint's saying the car is better, better every run. And his spotter this run told Clint, just forget you have a rear view mirror. Just drive ahead. Stop looking in the mirror. Let's go to Don. And behind him is a 24 car of Jeff Gordon. And despite a lot of changes, Jeff proceeds the car is not handling well. Listen in. Yeah, I must have just been using the arrow fam or something. I'm with the there now. I'm just getting sideways getting in the corner right now. If you couldn't understand what he was saying, he said it's the worst it's been all night. It's sideways on the entering the corner and tied in the middle. And what you didn't hear was a moment ago, Alan Gustafson came back and said, hey, Jeff, you're almost a tenth quicker than the guy you're running down. Keep it up, buddy. Keep it up. So Jeff's complaining, and Allen's saying you're doing a great job, and you're fast, so whatever we've done, it's working. 
Well, what you got to consider is the perspective that the driver has. He just knows what he's dealing with, and he knows it's not good. It's the car not just doing what he wants it to do. The crew chief has a bigger picture. He's got all the data. He can see all the lap times, and he can see that the 24 car is good. And that's when you got to really refocus him. You say, okay, I know what you have is not what you feel like you need, but it is good. I mean, you're, you're running third and looking like he's going to take second, possibly. The other thing we didn't hear there were a few of the uh, more colorful adjectives and adverbs Jeff Gordon was using to describe the. I understood those as a driver of his car. Okay. <laughs> 84 laps to go. Fight for second behind race leader Brad Kozlowski. Seventy eight laps to go tonight here at Richmond in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series 400 lapper that Brad Kozlowski has dominated so far. He's led three hundred five of three twenty two. But before you hand him the trophy. Just show you a little recent past history here at this racetrack talked about the driver that won not leading till after halfway. How about the final lead change within the final four laps in the last three races here. And a final green flag stretch of 12 laps or less means we're going to see a late yellow flag if recent history holds up. Brad wouldn't appreciate you showing all that and talking about that. But. I just report the facts. Okay. Brad Kozlowski leading now Jeff Gordon in second spot. 1.6 seconds, the gap first to second. There's Gordon, worked his way around Clint Boyer finally. And you see Boyer dropping back off Gordon's back bumper by a few car lengths in third position. Well, we have seen this before, a driver leading a lot of laps. Denny Hamlin led 381 of them, did not win. Guess who did? Man that needs to. That guy right there? Yep, Clint Boyer. Flat tire late on Denny's car that night when he looked like he was about to run the perfect Richmond race. So you're Brian Patty, Clint Boyer's crew chief, and you're sitting here in third. Greg Biffle has passed a, a, a car so you're probably not going to be able to get there on points given the number of cars that are one lap down and where Boyer stands. Boyer's got to get up there and either win the race to get in or have something happen to, to Biffle. Is there anything Brian Patty can do strategically to try and maybe force the hand? Yeah, right now they've run about, well, 56 laps since they last pitted. Now they can't go to the end. There's 73 laps to go. They could make it if they pitted now. They could actually make a pit stop right now and gain a lot of track position by the time the other guys pit if they wait till their tanks are out of gas, which is another 40 laps if they can go. I that, think, yeah. 
That's one thing he can do. Now, yeah. you know, it may not work out, but right now he needs to throw a Hail Mary. Now, I think that's a great gamble on their part is to set themselves and put themselves in that motion uh, to, to make that happen. Yeah, it could all backfire. A caution could come out or Biffle could have a problem later. And if you would have finished third, second or third, then you would have gotten in. But I think right now you've got a car that's capable of putting tires on and making up a lot of time. And if this cycles through, you might find yourself in the lead when that all that happens. All right, playing devil's advocate with you. We've just shown you the caution probabilities that there's going to be a late yellow flag. We've seen what a scramble. Oh, there's a caution right here. Well, I bet he's glad he didn't pit when I told him to. And debris in turn four or somebody. Uh, it is uh, apparently something happening that requires security help down in turn four on the spectator side of the fence. That would put um, said person in danger should uh, something happen on the racetrack right there. I don't want to give it any more publicity than that. Let's just say it's somebody doing something stupid that's brought out the caution in the race. I climb over the damn fence. Well, there you go. That's what it is. There's a spectator trying to climb up the, ca the crash fence in turn four. Who I suspect will be escorted out of here for a, a, a visit. Yeah, and he should With be. some of the authorities shortly. That is not smart. <laughs> yeah, he needed that. Yeah, that's got Biffle in a pretty good spot as long as they don't have any issues uh, for these next 70 laps. But let's Clint Boyer make another adjustment and get called up here if he can still try to win this race. Big moment here for the pit crews. Jamie. And Clint Boyer making his way down, saying he's really tight in the center, just too much wheel in it. They'll put four tires on. You see the wrench in the rear window. They will make a chassis adjustment this time and fill them up with Sunoco fuel, Doc. Brad Kozlowski bought to be a street car, a little bit freer than I would like. It needs about three seconds of fuel, going to put four tires. Likewise, Jeff Gordon to the car, really free in, tight middle, having trouble getting off. Great pit stop for Gordon, but four tires, and Kozlowski will still beat him off by half a car length off of pit road. And Boyer's going to have that inside row two position for the restart. Coming up in a minute at Richmond.
Just the fourth caution of the night here at Richmond International Raceway. 65 laps to go when they come back around to the strike this time. And a Brad Kozlowski's team holding the lead off another exchange of pit stops. Caution for perhaps one of the more unusual things in my nearly 30 years of broadcasting these races. A fan climbing the catch fence, the safety fence between the grandstand and the racetrack. The topic of conversation came up, wonder which driver's T-shirt that fan was wearing. But the answer to that is he wasn't wearing a shirt. <laughs> so there you go. Oh. So big restart coming up here for uh, the driver who's led almost all of this race, Brad Kozlowski. All right, what is for me on this restart is to tell me how far the 15 is laying back. I see him, he changes it. He changes it as we're going, so he pulls up tight to me in the middle of the corner, stops, legs back, and then runs. So keep me posted on that, how far back and whatnot. The 15, copy. You don't care about the 24. I can manage him. I can't manage both of them. So you get the 15 for me. Brad Kozlowski uh, looking for some help from his spotter Joey Meyer with Clint Boyer there inside row two. Yeah, it's always easier to be able to see uh, and tell as a driver that car on your outside than trying to look in the mirror to see how far back that other one car back, is laying back. One back, one back, half back closing. Green, green, green. Boyer got a great start. Yeah, and that car on the inside is a bigger threat. It's what we've seen. Oh, Kozlowski a little wash up there. They would get back to the gas. Gordon even clearing the 15 off of that corner. at the yellow to Danica Patrick, who is now back on the lead lap. In 15th place, Tony Stewart had missing lug nuts, had to come back to pit road, so Smoke is back in 16th place and last car on the lead lap now. Warriors car not showing the speed this time that it has on the last couple of restarts. Jamie McMurray won, Joey Logano 22. Fifth and sixth place. Logano winner here back in April. McMurray needing to be winner here in September to make the chase. Ryan Newman kind of right in this group of cars, hoping everybody's going to play nice there. Just want everybody to sort things out and get these last 60 laps behind him, and he'll find himself having a spot in the chase. well clear of Biffle and Boyer on point. So even if there is a new winner, Newman looks good to get the last spot in the championship. But again, long way to go. And uh, what he needs to do is just avoid disaster for these last 60 laps. But it's a short track. It can happen. It'll get, uh, things will get a lot more nervous in that 31 pit and inside that 31 car as we run these laps out. Very familiar pattern in this race so far. Very good in the early laps of a run for this two car. Earlier in the race, Kevin Harvick would run him down after a while and uh, to actually take the lead briefly. But that stopped on about the third run of the race and it's literally been all Keselowski since lap 127, unchecked out front. Yeah, they've been able to make an adjustment that helped the long range speed of this two car but not give up anything on the front end to get themselves a, a gap out front and just pretty much leave the rest of the competition in their dust right now. Announcement this week that Nationwide Insurance would become a uh, principal sponsor of Dale Jr.'s efforts next year. As they uh, leave NASCAR's second series to become a team sponsor in the NASCAR Sprint Cup side, Going to back Junior for 21 races in each of the next three seasons. And the Hendrick team saying that communication is, quote, ongoing. 
with the National Guard on the future of that sponsorship, which the team says is contracted through 2015. But of course, the Guard said in the news earlier uh, that they were going to conclude after this season. Dale Leonard Jr. running in 11th position. Started back in 24th on this night. And we're back after this message and a word from your ABC station. Brad Keselowski out in front inside the final 50 laps of tonight's race here at Richmond International Raceway. Led all but 17 of them so far, but has the most crucial 47 still ahead. Only two different drivers have led this race tonight. Four lead changes, four cautions for 27 laps. Nobody's crashed in this one so far. All the cautions for debris or assorted other unusual circumstances. <laughs> and on the lead lap, 16 cars, not among them Greg Biffle, who is in 19th place, but barely hanging on to the final place in the chase if things stand as they are now with Kozlowski out in front and winning. Let's go up to speed and check in on some of these front runners as we run through these late stages of the race. Stuck. What an impressive performance for driver Brad Kozlowski and crew chief Paul Wolf. Brad said, really, the car just gotten free in long runs. Paul made a slight air pressure adjustment early in the race and then a track bar adjustment, minimal track bar, and it got better and better. And then uh, Brad said, OK, I'm a little too tight on the short run. They made an air pressure and now the car is perfect. No other adjustments on that final stop. He has dominated tonight. Now, running in second spot, we've documented all the issues that Jeff Gordon has had in a car that he dominated with back in April. The car has been tied in tight in the middle rather and had no drive off and Jeff said I've been sideways so loose in but he hasn't commented at all since that last stop obviously a pretty good car and focusing on trying to run down the leader Jamie Clint Boyer's had a decent night been running top five now on the last stop though they made a wedge adjustment first time tonight and right away Clint said we are tighter they told him to hang on and now he just reported front tires are chattering terribly 
distance. Running fourth is the four car of Kevin Harvick, the only driver to lead in this race other than Brad Keselowski. He led 17 laps early, but since about the midway point, it's just been a big question mark for Harvick and company. In fact, on the last pit stop, Kevin told crew chief Rodney Childers, I don't know what to tell you. They fought loose ends, snug in the middle, but they just haven't hit it tonight. Doc. Behind them, the one car, Jamie McMurray. Remember, he's got to win to get into chase. It's the only way he can get in. And McMurray said, if I have to move people in the final 10 laps, I will use the bumper, the fender, whatever I have to. Right now, he said, he's a little loose on the bottom, running better up top as a good car and would like a late restart. Now, back behind him is Joey Logano, the driver who won. There's a 22, one here back in April. Logano said basically they fight lack of rear grip all night long and after an adjustment that last stop he said now i am really tight center and loose off today kurt bush's crew chief daniel canoes told me they needed the morale and the momentum of a win tonight remember they haven't won since martinsville a few months ago but they haven't quite gotten there with the handling good news is since the restart kurt's picked up three positions as he heads for his eighth chase alan all right, Dave, thanks. Kyle Larson, 42, Ryan Newman, 31, eighth and ninth places here as they race for a spot. Larson has uh, had his moments through the night, but for now, a little far back to challenge for the win. Yeah, he's been solid uh, for a lot of the night, but he needed to be spectacular. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. Talked about the, the new tire combination that Goodyear brought here for the first time. And during practice, we saw a lot of teams the word that came out the most in their comments, confused about uh, how to adapt their car to it. And at least for me, the race that I've seen tonight was not the one that I expected to see based on a lot of the comments in the garage area. Even though people are slipping and sliding around a lot more, I still thought the pack would be a little closer together and we might see actually one of those wilder nights with bumping and banging and spinning and instead uh, people are sliding around a lot and really struggling to get a handle on it and it's kind of spread the field a little more than we, I think we might have expected and certainly from what I heard in the garage today. Yeah I mean what it did it, you know it obviously produced these multiple grooves and lines you see cars running everywhere but the cars are so out of control. Uh, that it's just hard for this for to have a good race. I mean, it's just to get near each other. We heard Jeff Gordon talk about how terrible his car was, and he was running third, catching the second place car. It just makes it really difficult. It's all you can do, all these guys can do, just to basically hang on to them. Yeah, I really thought when I saw the fall off of the tire and, and the things that I was seeing in practice yesterday where the track was widening out, I really expected a very, very competitive race, which was going to create some contact. And uh, it's been anything but that to this point. And let's see with one guy really the two car and Brad Keselowski figuring things out way better than everybody else here so far tonight. And you know Brad talked about that each driver has a specific feel that they excel at and you can have a track that's your best track and a simple tire change can eliminate that feel and that potential for your style of driving exactly the opposite for him here tonight because obviously they put together a car for him that he sure likes the feel of he's been dominant in this one at Richmond so far.
down inside the final 30 laps of the Federated Auto Parts 400 for the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at Richmond International Raceway. With Brad Keselowski leading all but 17 of the laps so far. Needs to lead the rest of them to take a series leading fourth win on the season. Talked about some people's championship potential. And uh, what a story the last couple of years have been for Keselowski. Of course, wins the 2012 series championship for Roger Penske in a Dodge. Then an already planned manufacturer change. They switched to Ford for 2013 and didn't make the chase a year ago. Now they come back this season and both Logano and, and uh, Joey Logano and Brad Keselowski for Penske, each with three wins this season. Brad in position to perhaps get a fourth. And they've talked about how far they've come in understanding uh, their changeover to the new manufacturer and, and how much further forward he feels they've been this year and all that even despite rule changes that change the configuration of the car some for this year too. Yeah, it's a great race team and Penske uh, you know even though they're only two cars they do such a good job of staying on top of, of the technology side and, I, and Paul Wolf obviously a big part of that I, I think that communication that he has with Brad they you know they really have a great great relationship and uh, we sure see the difference between last year and this year in the numbers though it's a big big I think some of that's winning the championship and a little hangover from that in 2013 but they're back to form now yeah there's no doubt uh, this is a team that has to be considered as one of the championship favorites. Uh, it was shocking to all of us last year, but it can't have. It's very easy for that hangover part that you're talking about, Andy, to, after winning a championship uh, to, for that to affect you. I think another thing that helps them is they made these changes and learned about these cars and things that changed. The one thing they don't have to worry about, the, the engine program is so solid with Doug Yates and his people that that's just something that, that you know is going to be solid there. They've got great reliability. Excellent horsepower that, that stands up to most anything else out there. And so then you can work on your car. And when you're not performing, you know areas you need to look in, whether it's aero or chassis. Yeah, you don't need to look at the engine. No, no I agree with you on that one. The predominance of the mile and a half track configuration in the chase, five of the ten races on that configuration of track. Two of Brad's three wins this season come on mile and a half tracks. None of them that are in the chase, but on mile and a half tracks. And the third one that he has so far this season came on a track that's in the chase at New Hampshire where we go back to in uh, just a few weeks. Well, you know, it's not all that uh, different than this racetrack, even though you don't have quite the banking, and it is a mile track at, at Loudoun, so you have to look forward to that. And I would think that looking at the Kentucky dominance that he had, and you would look at Chicago next week, yep. uh, similar tracks there, worn out surface, a little bit rough, that uh, he has to be looking forward to the first couple of races in this chase. And right now, hoping that we don't see the yellow flag, uh, because he's got a two and a half second lead on Jeff Gordon in second place and Gordon not gaining any ground uh, of any significance on Keselowski at all. Kevin Harvick's slide though continues. He's gone from second to third to fourth now to fifth and now to sixth as Joey Logano gets by Harvick. Only other driver to lead this race tonight Harvick led twice for 17 laps. But again, no one else but uh, Kozlowski has led since lap 127. And I really think that some of this could be, too, that as other drivers got up and, and went to the top side of the racetrack and put down rubber, that it actually probably hurt that groove a little bit. Harvey kind of had it to himself for a long time there. And uh, then there's not as much grip there with all of that rubber being put down and more cars up there. And you know, while we're talking about Kozlowski and watching Harvick and Logano race here, let's talk about Joey Logano and his potential uh, to be a champion over these next 10 weeks. Three wins this season uh, has been a factor a lot over the course of uh, this summer, almost each and every week. I've got him picked as my favorite to win the championship. I just think he's on, it's on the verge of being, you know, going out there and winning a lot of races. He's just uh, you know, just getting better and better. And just like I said, this Penske team is, is just in a really good place right now. Now you can see Joey Logano has really found a home at uh, Team Penske. Four wins this year. Look at the laps led in his time at Penske, and a lot of that this year. Yeah, it's been very, very solid. And you know, part of it is is a more mature race driver, but feeling like that you found a home too, a place that you know came and uh, really wanted Joey to to be there and be a part of this organization. Uh, his teammate Brad Keselowski was instrumental in getting him hired by Roger Penske so uh, a lot of good things and that that gives you a good feeling as a driver to do good things 
Tell you what, he and Harvick are having a heck of a race here. <laughs> it's putting on a great show. This is more what we expected to see for the lead and battles, you know, in the yeah. top five yeah. a lot of the night. Just hasn't materialized to that. So Joey, the winner here back in April and now in the top five and this one going to make for a pretty good uh, year at Richmond for the uh, Connecticut native. Well, Clint Boyer running third, Jamie McMurray fourth, Greg Biffle 19th at the moment, all behind Brad Keselowski right now. It's Biffle holding the final place in the chase. Will we see the late yellow that we've seen here before and have another dramatic finish here at Richmond? 13 laps to go now. I'll tell you, Boyer and Jamie Murray have to hand it to him. They gave great efforts uh, tonight. Just, you know, one guy, Keselowski, even though Gordon is sitting there in second, he's had a solid night. But uh, Keselowski's just been so dominant that it took that chance for either Boyer or McMurray to try to win and get themselves in but it's still not over it'd be a tough decision right now but we saw a caution handy for a crew chief not for Clint Boyer it would they almost have to do what everybody does it <laughs> you know yeah just do something crazy haven't been able to beat, beat them heads up tonight not so sure I wouldn't just take four tires and try and line up third on the restart and see if uh, the bumper happens to make <laughs> contact. For uh, Clint Boyer. Of course it was this race a year ago where all the controversy swirled with the uh, late spin. And NASCAR making uh, efforts. Uh, in the following week to uh, add a 13th driver to the chase and penalizing Michael Waltrip racing and some conversation this week because it's the uh, the year anniversary and here we are again as to whether th that team ever really recovered from the after effects and the fallout of uh, what happened here a year ago. Yeah I mean they, they lost one of their teams and I think that's the, probably the biggest thing that hurt them is that they lost that one set of data that they had and input a crew, another crew chief and a lot of a lot of things there I think. You know, they, Clint's just a, he's a good driver. He's going to win races. They just have to get you know, over that hump that they, what they lost last year. Yeah, and you, you, one thing you didn't add in there was a huge sponsor that they lost, and those dollars can translate to a lot of things that you're able to do as a team and, and move forward. Cost a lot to, to compete with Gibbs and, and with Hendrick and these organizations that have the dollars at their disposal because they all of their deals are or sponsored. You see Clint's got a great sponsor there in Five Hour Energy, but you know, having that 13 brings in more dollars and more people as you were pointing out. And they certainly have not recovered from that. We can only hope that they're able to do that, maybe build back to a third team and move forward. Uh, good organization. <laughs> Still Logano and Kevin Harvick. <laughs> for four uh, for fifth and sixth rather. win it out on that one for now two drivers that are probably going to see a lot of each other in the upcoming 10 weeks. Now coming to five to go for Brad Kozlowski. What was the word we used at the start of the night it had to be perfect. <laughs> He's been he paying attention didn't he. Our Midas Golden Touch tonight to Brad Kozlowski and his pit crew who took or held the lead on every pit stop actually held the lead on it uh, took or held the lead is correct because Kevin Harvick did get the lead a couple of times briefly tonight but uh, they have definitely had the Golden Touch in this one and so has Brad I mean Brad just done a great job all night long I've never seen him really in trouble coming up to Greg Biffle about to go Another lap down. It would be a second lap down for Biffle. But if things stay as they are now and he can run it out, Biffle's going to get a place in the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup. Certainly not the night he was hoping for. But if there's no really late twist here, Biffle's still going to get in. 
Uh, he's the most nervous driver here right now, though, just hoping that he doesn't run over something, create a flat tire, get himself in a situation. See that car still on the loose side, but doing what he's got to do to become a part of that 16 starting next week. He doesn't want to see a caution. No, he does it. not want to see a caution right now. That's one thing he's looking at, it's caution line. Does not want to see him pop on. Ever have a race like this, like Brad's having tonight? Where you just, you just, I, I remember one at Phoenix for you. Didn't start out that way. You got behind early, but came roaring back. Yeah, yeah, there were a few times and you have good cars like that, but um, this is as dominant as I've seen here. You know, just amazing. It takes me back to probably when Jeff Burton won at New Hampshire with leading all the laps up there. Well, this is actually the greatest percentage of laps led in a race since that win from Burton at New Hampshire. Final half a lap for Brad Keselowski. He will have led 383 of 400 laps, becomes the leading winner of this season. Fourth victory of the year for Brad Keselowski. He'll be the number one seed in the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup. Good job, buddy. Great job. 400, man. Good job, Paul. Awesome job, guys. Heck of a performance again. Uh, awesome job out there, Brad. Guys in the pits tonight. Everyone back in the shop, man. This is, uh, this is fun. It's a good way to get started here next week. That 400, you heard the voice of Roger Penske. That is Roger's 400th win in major racing competition. A milestone they've been pursuing for a couple of weeks now. And Brad Kozlowski did it for the captain tonight. Hey, great car. Great everybody. Great everything. Yeah, he put a whooping on him tonight. It was the fastest it took him a whole lap to get it slowed <laughs> down. <laughs> Finishes 19th, and he gets in the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup by seven points. Think about it, seven finishing positions anywhere during the course of these opening 26 races. He can breathe now. It's not going to be a jumping up and down celebration for Biffle. That's going to be a whoo. Yes. But why not? The big celebration for our Goodyear Superior performer tonight, Brad Keselowski. What a race. Get that new Goodyear tire and put a whipping on him. Well, Clint Boyer drove a great race tonight, had a good car. He finishes third but he'll miss out on competing for the championship, Jamie. That is the good news. It was a good run for these guys. Brian Patty said, we should have been running like this all year. The bad news, you just missed the chase. What's going through your mind, Clint? Yeah, I mean, you know, if you make the chase, you want to compete for a championship. And, you know, truth be told, we're, we're not there right now. Um, a lot of work to do. we got to continue to, to build on momentum like we had uh, here tonight. Um, you know, it's definitely frustrating not making that chase. But like I said, when you do make a chase, you want to compete for a championship, not just ride around in it. And uh, um, a lot of racing left, you know, 10 races ago, we still haven't won a race. And, uh, you know, this five hour energy Toyota team, everybody on it, on its 15 team deserves, you know, a win by the end of the year. And I'll see to it, they get it. Your crew chief told me earlier today, some changes are coming for you guys and they're starting next week. Where do you guys need to improve to get back to winning form? Well, they say they are. Um, we'll just have to see. You know, uh, everybody's working hard. Everybody at, at TRD, everybody at MWR. I mean, you know, the two and the 24 have pretty much been the class of the field, you know, all season long. Um, that was our best effort. That's all I had. That's all we had as a, as a race team. Uh, we put it all out there, and, and still we're just th third best. So got some work to do, but um, a lot of racing left. It has been a long, tough year for this team. Alan. So as we look at uh, the final regular season wrap up, you see Brad Keselowski going to the top of the board with his fourth win of the season. And in that right hand column, 
Brian Newman, Greg Biffle clinching a place in the chase on points. Clint Boyer and Kyle Larson missing out by narrow margins. Lots more still to come from Richmond. NASCAR Spring Cup Series at Richmond, presented by AutoZone. Get proven tough Duralast brakes, the official brakes of NASCAR, sold only at AutoZone. Get in the zone, AutoZone. And Nationwide, Nationwide is on your side. Some celebrating to be done tonight here at Richmond International Raceway after a dominant performance. Victory Lane presented by Five Hour Energy and the winners, Brad Kozlowski. A shower of suds down here for Brad Kozlowski. Hey, my friend, what a performance. Hey, yesterday when you and I spoke, you predicted you would be chasing the four car all night. It was the other way around tonight. How would you describe this performance in this car tonight? What a night. I, uh, I, part of me, I pulled in the victory A and I pinched myself once to make sure I wasn't dreaming. Uh, this, these, are, uh, these are nights you don't forget as a driver and you live for. The Miller Lite Ford Fusion was just flying. Uh, you know, and, and this is, I couldn't ask for a better way to enter the chase than to come in with a win and take the first seed. and. Uh, we're ready. We want to run for another cup. We really feel like this team has it. Team Penske is really clicking. 400th win for Team Penske and uh, just feel so lucky, man, to have uh, such an incredible team and uh, car like we did tonight and to be able to execute it and not have any bad luck. We've had plenty of bad luck over the last few weeks, but uh, wow, what a night. A year ago, you walked away from here with your head down because you had missed the chase. Tonight, not only are you back in the chase with this win, you're the top seed in the chase. What turned it around for this team this year? I, I think a lot of things. I think, uh, you know, working with Ford and getting another year under our belt, certainly some major progress there. Uh, I think last year was a, a bit of a kick in the, in the butt. Uh, you know, not to what you want, but it's enough to, to really push us all and find another level. Uh, we did a great job in 2012, but in the sports world, you got to keep progressing, Doc, and uh, everyone else progressed in and we didn't. We didn't progress enough last year. And this year, we we really have uh, upped our game. And uh, man, this is an incredible team. I feel lucky to drive. I feel lucky to be in the Sprint Cup Series and uh, drinking lots of beer. I want to thank everybody at Sprint and Miller. And we're going to have a good night tonight. I bet they are. They're going to celebrate. What a night for Brad Keselowski and Team Penske. 
400th win for Roger Penske. Amazing. I'd say it's a night a driver dreams about. Led all but 17 laps to the 400. And a big night for Brad Keselowski and Team Penske. Lots more still to come. Many interviews to come with Chase qualified drivers. Little post-race fireworks here at Richmond International Raceway after Brad Keselowski's win tonight in the Federated Auto Parts 400. And a look at how they'll be seated and what the points would look like to start. The